July, 2054 AD. The Earth was caught in a great battle between unknown alien forces. Their weapons were terrifying and powerful beyond human reckoning. Our planet was overwhelmed, its surface reduced to ash and rubble in the blink of an eye. The coalition government knew the war was coming. In response, they prepared the Earth Life Colonization Project, Project Exodus. Interstellar arcs were launched all across the planet, from every major city on Earth. Bravely, we leapt from our cradle, our home for the last four and a half billion years. But most of the arcs never even made it out of the atmosphere. Only a small handful managed to escape. Among them was our ship, the White Whale. After leaving Earth behind, we spent two years wandering in space, searching. We thought of ourselves as the lucky ones, the pioneers who would settle a new world. But our past caught up with us, literally. The alien blitz was unrelenting. If not for the efforts of a lone hero, we would never have survived. Our ship took heavy damage. We lost control. With our flight systems down, the White Whale was pulled into the gravitational field of a nearby planet, its hull shattering and breaking to pieces as we plummeted toward the surface. Since then, two months have passed. Attention, external access confirmed. Disengaging stasis in 10 seconds. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Releasing hatch. Please stand clear. Hey there. Looks like you're all in one piece. Careful. Just take it nice and slow, okay? Your senses will need time to reactivate. Your pod is the only one around that landed intact. Good thing I found you. My name's Elma. You want to tell me yours? You don't even remember your own name? It must be the stasis hangover. That's not good. Just try and focus, all right? Good, there we go. What else you remember? 
It'll come. In the meantime, I'll get you up to speed here as best I can. How are your limbs? Can you move? We'll take it easy while you shake the stasis out of your system. One step at a time, all right? First things first, you'll be needing a weapon. There you go. All right, let's get going. Most of the white whale's life pods didn't survive the crash, like this one. You're one of the lucky few. Right. You don't even remember the white whale, do you? You know, the L002? The ship we escaped Earth on? You remember Earth, right? Planet Earth. Your homeworld. Or rather, it used to be anyway. Unfortunately, it was caught in a battle between two alien forces. And destroyed. Ring any bells? Don't feel bad. It's one memory I'd like to forget. I know. It's been following me for a while now. I didn't want to alarm you, but we're going to need to defend ourselves. You up to the task? You're not half bad. There's plenty of work back in the city for someone who knows how to handle a weapon, you know. Then you're interested. In that case, I might have just the job for you. But anyway, we can talk more details later. For now, let's keep moving. The rain's starting to let up, just in time for sunrise. Follow me. I promise you're gonna love this.
wild, huh? They're all indigenous, as far as we can tell. We need to learn to play nice with these guys if we're going to try and coexist together. Call this planet Mira. You won't find it on any star chart. But it's our new home. Recognize the habitat unit? That's where we're headed. Watch yourself. That first step's a doozy. We can jump if you like. You could handle the fall. But the indigens down there are another story. Some big, some mean, all nasty. Given our options, the high road here would be the safer way to go, relatively speaking. That said, whichever way you want to go, I'll follow your lead. You decide. Looks a lot bigger up close, doesn't it? And this was just the habitat unit. The white whale was one hell of a ship. Until it all came crashing down, at least. That's the West Gate. It's closed off now for security reasons. But we've repurposed a freight elevator that will get us inside. <laughs> We can't leave them roaming here. Not this close to the gate. We're gonna have to take them down. You ready? It's a shame we had to settle near so much wildlife. Luckily, some species aren't so hostile, but they aren't necessarily friendly either. I've come to learn that there's a fine line between self-defense and provoking a fight. We need to walk that line. All right, let's head in. Who knows? Maybe seeing the inside will jog your memory.
Well, here we are. Not too shabby, huh? For a giant beached spaceship, anyway. But, like it or not, this place is our home now. We took the name from the city it was modeled after back on Earth. We call it New Los Angeles. Welcome to NLA. And so it was that another survivor came to join our band of refugees. Together, we resolved to forge a new way of life here on Mira. Come on. New L.A. was our beautiful lie to ourselves. Truth is, we were adrift, heading into the unknown. Our native home was gone, swallowed in a shroud of light. And our future was uncertain. We had no idea what fate lay in store for us. Only that we had to keep living in order to see it. How about a quick tour of the facilities to refresh your memory? Let's start with your living quarters. Follow me. citizens of New Los Angeles. Good day. This is your director general, Maurice Chausson. Today, I once again come to you with news I am truly delighted to share. Yesterday, we repatriated ten more White Whale crew members. These fellow pioneers will rejoin our ranks as citizens of NLA, bringing with them skills and know-how that will bolster our ability to survive and indeed flourish here in our new home. This, of course, is only the latest success in our continuing efforts. Director General? Since when? For the rescue and recovery of Two days ago, ma'am. From political aide to Director General in just a few weeks. At this rate, he'll be Emperor by next month. Irina? Gwyn? Nice work out there, ma'am. The three of us were in the Coalition forces together. Specifically, the Special Operations Heavy Armor Training Unit, a.k.a. the Skeleton Crew. I was a colonel, and Arena a lieutenant. Gwyn was a more recent recruit. Of course, I keep telling them we don't need those old ranks anymore now that we're here. You're still colonel to me, ma'am. No reorg will ever change that. And that's not about chain of command, either. It's about respect. You've earned it. And the award for best ass kiss goes to... Uh, <clears throat> well, I'd remind you both the ma'ams aren't necessary if I thought you'd listen. This one of the survivors, ma'am? The survivor. I only found a single pod intact at Starfall Basin. Wait, what? What happened to ten more crew members? Come on, seriously. Shosan was never one to let the truth get in the way of a good speech. Still, every last survivor counts. You can call me Arena. I'm with the Interceptors. 
Me too. Same division. You can call me Mr. Evans. Or just Gwyn. All right, ma'am. We should be getting back to work. Until next time, Colonel. Right. We should be going, too. The administrative district isn't far. That's where you'll be calling home. For now, anyway. Look, I know what exhaust smells like, and it was exhaust in the cockpit. Just check the ductwork, would you? Oh, I'm checking. I just seriously doubt... Hey, look at that! The intake exhaust bypass is reversed. Oh man, it's a good thing I caught that. You caught that? You're the one who cleared me to fly! Everything okay? It's not like you to flub a flight check, Lynn. Good thing you had a rugged pilot like Doug at the controls. Oh, hey, Elma. How'd it go out there? And would this be one of the you-know-whos? Cool. I'm Lin Lee Koo, mechanic and top all-around fix-it gal for Blade. Well, that, uh, doesn't usually happen. We know it doesn't, Lynn. Look, I know what you're thinking. But believe me, young as she may look, and yes, she is young, she's actually one of our top talents. Most of the time, that is. Most of the time. Anyway, you guys heading back to the barracks? Yeah. Why do you ask? As long as you're here, why don't I take you on the transport? It's a great way to see the city. I'll give you the grand tour. That sounds like a great idea. All right, Doug, I think that'll be all for today. You can clean up here and dock the scale. What? Don't mind the exhaust. I'll take care of it tomorrow. Don't mind it? Wait, why am I cleaning up your mess in the first place? Lynn! Lynn! No, 
not bad, huh? You can see everything from up here. It beats walking, that's for sure. The best way to see NLA. I never get tired of this view. It's like a different city every time. It's certainly come a long way in the last few weeks. There's still so much to be done. One day at a time. Speaking of which, we don't really have time for a full pleasure cruise here. Why don't you give us the express tour then? Just the highlights. Okay, you got it. <clears throat> New LA is divided into four districts. We departed from the industrial district, where Duck and I were conducting the flight test. It has food production, skill development, you know, industries and stuff. It's also where the West Gate is located, remember? Expect to pass through there fairly often. The only other gate out of the city is in the Administrative District, but I'm skipping ahead. <clears throat> Next is the Commercial District. Restaurants, galleries, cafes, clothing, groceries, you name it. It's a veritable shopping paradise! The CD is the closest thing to a downtown we've got. It can actually get pretty crowded sometimes. Well, by NLA standards anyway. Day or night, the best and only bargains on the planet. To your right, the residential district. Housing, housing, and more housing. Well, plus a nice park and the cathedral. If you're ever looking for quiet time alone, want to relax and unwind with a good book, that's the spot. Right? The park is my favorite place to just zone out and chill. And last but not least, our destination, the Administrative District, the nerve center at the heart of NLA. Note the distinct dual-level structure here. The upper level holds our administrative tower, home to Blade HQ and the government, not to mention Armory Alley, as well as the barracks where we live. The lower level there is a hangar complex for scale maintenance and repairs. And this concludes our tour. We will be landing shortly. Thanks, Lynn. We'll save the rest of orientation for once we're back at the barracks. Enjoy your stay in the Administrative District, and thank you for flying Linley Airlines. Right. Let's get you over to the barracks. Then I should file my report. They'll be eager to hear the details on how I found you, I'm sure. Well then, we better not keep them waiting. The barracks are pretty close, actually. They're set up just behind the giant blade tower here. That road there wraps around the left side and leads right to it. We'll pass through Armory Alley, but let's not get sidetracked, okay? We can check it out later. And here we are, the Blade Barracks. Consider yourself our guest until we finish getting you registered. Feel free to come and go as you please. I think I can answer that one. So... You must be the latest rescue. Secretary Nagi! Miss Ku. Chipper as always, I see. 
What can I say? Pep is my middle name. I ran into Doug Barrett on the way here, and he didn't seem quite so upbeat. Anything about today's flight I should know? No. Nothing to worry about. Good. Be sure it stays that way. More importantly, Elma, you found another one. Excellent work out there. Just doing my job, Mr. Secretary. Now, as for officially registering our new citizen here... Why don't we talk inside? There's a lot of ground to cover. It could take some time. Ah, yes, of course. Forgive me. You must be weary from the stasis and your journey back to us. Please, after you. I'll put on some tea. Allow me to formally introduce myself. My name is Kentaro Nagi. You may remember me as Captain of the White Whale, but now I serve as Secretary of Defense here for New L.A. The Provisional Government has charged me with keeping the peace, so all military and police matters fall under my jurisdiction. He's also my superior officer. And he'd be an excellent person to talk to when you're ready to start looking for work. What about a job right here with Blade? He seems capable. Let's give it a little more time. At least until he knows enough to be able to make an informed decision. He seems to be suffering from some form of memory loss. Memory loss? From the stasis? He could barely remember his name. And nothing at all about what happened to Earth or the White Whale. I see. Though, come to think of it, the entire lot of us have only been on this planet for, what, two months? It shouldn't take very long to get caught up. My thoughts exactly. Well then, where should we begin? Blade is an acronym. Builders of a legacy after the destruction of Earth. Quite fitting, I think. It's a relatively new organization. Up there in space, we had plenty of provisions, and a crew trained to handle the limited amount of situations we might encounter in our travels. But of course, all that changed after we lost most of our ship and came crashing down here on Mira. We needed food, water, Search and rescue teams, surveyors, police. The list goes on and on. It was too much for the provisional government to manage on its own. So Blade was born. The idea was to have one central organization with different disciplines to fill these various roles. Its core was pulled from the coalition military, so it's mostly former soldiers. But fighting isn't our most important duty. Right now, we have a single top priority that supersedes all others. The search for and recovery of the Lifehold. Take a look at this. The White Whale was designed to carry an exceedingly large number of passengers, all of them held in stasis. All housed in a structure called the Lifehold. This is a complete schematic of that facility. Only essential personnel were conscious and active for the journey from Earth. The flight crew, maintenance engineers. And of course, some military so we could defend ourselves if necessary. But the vast majority were in the Lifehold. Are in the Lifehold. With any luck, they're all still there, in stasis, waiting to be rescued. But, there's a problem. We now know the Lifehold broke apart along with the rest of the ship when we came down on Mira. 
What we don't know is exactly where all the pieces landed. Not very comforting, I know. Blade's top priority now is locating the missing units. It started at the end, two years ago. The end of Earth. The casualty of a battle between two hyper-advanced alien civilizations. Their technology and weapons were beyond our comprehension. We were like infants, naked, powerless. The Earth was reduced to ash and blown away. I still wonder if I hadn't been there, if maybe all of this could have somehow been avoided. No one can know that, Elma. What we do know is without you, there'd have been no Project Exodus, and no escape for any of us. Did it go perfectly? No. But we are here, and we are alive. We survived. <laughs> so yes, Project Exodus. Once we learned the Earth might be threatened, we needed a plan to preserve all her various life forms. That plan was the Earth Life Colonization Project, otherwise known as Project Exodus. Those of us who escaped on the White Whale spent over two years wandering in space. Two hard years. But we clung to our mission, find a habitable planet, and settle there. We had no idea how long it would take. Or that the decision would eventually be made for us. The Xenoforms found us again, and, well, it wasn't a happy reunion. Earth wasn't enough. They wanted humanity destroyed. For better and for worse, we were close to planet Mira when we lost control of the White Whale. Inertia and gravity took it from there. The ship had taken way too much damage to survive entering the atmosphere intact. We had no choice. We channeled all the power we had left to soft land the habitat. Once the dust cleared, we set to work transforming it into its current state. Searching for survivors, establishing Blade, Installing the Provisional Government. Basically, making it a sustainable city. Ah, yes. All citizens of NLA are required to register their name, age, and occupation. We also ask you report any personal assets and take a short survey regarding your current state of health. All purely as a precaution, I'm sure you understand. As the caretakers of humanity's survival, we all have certain responsibilities. And hey, it's not all bad. Registering gets you access to all kinds of public services. In any case, I'm sure this is all a lot to digest. You'll be wanting some time. Ms. Ku, even I'm tired of hearing myself speak. Why don't you take our guest out for some air? Perhaps a tour of the administrative district. Yes, sir. Come on, we'll keep this briefing brief. You know, it's not every day we're authorized to let a civilian tour the administrative district. Yeah. Nagi must really, really want him to join Blade. The AD is a bit different from the other districts. It's got everything a Blade would need, all in one place, without any extra fluff. Get a load of that skill! 
Even the way that they walk is so cool. Oh, yeah, work it, baby. Mm -mm -mm. What? You don't remember what a skell is? That gorgeous exoskeleton that just went by? Basically like the most incredible, awesomest super weapons ever? Lasers, force fields, bipedal and vehicular transformations. Sorry, just... I get so excited whenever I think about it. Originally, scales were developed as a defensive measure to counter potential alien threats. It wasn't enough to save Earth, though. We were outnumbered and outgunned. Still, just look around you. New L.A. has gone from basically nothing to this in just two short months. We could never have come so far so fast without scale technology. I'd love to get you into one to see for yourself, but it's not that simple. Well, yeah, duh. For one thing, only blades are allowed to pilot scales. And even then, you need a license. These aren't toys we're talking about. They're complex machines with powerful weapons. And they're a precious resource. We only have so many of them to go around. So yes, as you might imagine, the certification process is a fairly rigorous one. I'm sure you're thinking, where do I sign up for the test? But it's not that simple. They choose you, not the other way around. You can't just walk in the front door and volunteer. There is some criteria. The details are largely hidden, but basically, HQ only allows the cream of the crop to take the test. Blades who go above and beyond in their duties, and for the people of New L.A. in general. So what do you say? If you become a Blade and work hard, I'm sure it'll only be a matter of time before they tap you on the shoulder. Speaking of work, that reminds me. Why don't we check out the Mission Control Board first? That's where we take on our assignments. Good call. Let's head on over. So this is mission control. We don't have a dispatch system yet, so Blades usually choose their own assignments. Everyone comes here and selects from the missions available on the board. And it's not just official blade tasks. Anyone with a request is free to post here. Businesses, citizens, whoever. Yeah, it's basically how anything gets done in New LA, so the board is constantly updating. Just about every blade will stop by here at some point in their shift. It's like our second home. You'll always find a number of blades around here, blowing off steam or browsing mission control for their next assignment. Whenever I get freed up, I'll stop here first thing to check for any missions I might be suited for. Likewise. And if the assignment seems too tough to handle solo, that's what the scout console is for. We should show you that next. Hey, who's giving this tour anyway? We also have the scout console, if the assignment seems too tough to handle solo. And, uh, Elma just said that, didn't she? Ta-da! The Blade Scout Console. When the going gets tough, the tough go to the Scout Console. You know, to get tougher. If you do end up joining us, you'll quickly realize just how important this little kiosk is. A lot of the mission control assignments are too much for any one blade to handle. They tend to call for multiple members with specialized knowledge or unique skills. This console lets you search for and recruit other blades to fill those roles for just such an occasion. You can't spell blade without team. Sort of. Anyway, awesome, right? So you're ready to join up? Hang on, Lynn. Take it easy, would you? What? I'm just saying you'd have to be some kind of an idiot not to want to join Blade. 
Or maybe a crazy person. Oh, and here I thought you might be pressuring our guest. Apology accepted. Now, how about a little shopping? And I'm not talking about the stuff over in the commercial district. I'm talking about Armory Alley. So this street's what we call Armory Alley. Blades can requisition equipment from any of the vendors here. I won't lie. Most Blade members face danger on a daily basis. Having the latest gear isn't about impressing your friends. It's a matter of survival. True enough. And that goes not only for your personal armor and weapons, what we call ground gear, but for Skell equipment as well. Ah. Uh, huh? Oh, right, the door. I think all that's left is the heart of Blade itself. Blade Tower. So yeah, Blade Tower. When we come here, it's usually to stop by Blade HQ. The higher-ups, like Secretary Nagi and Commander Vandom, will spend most of their day here. The government leaders, too. They're based in the tower. Guys like our new Director General Maurice Chausson, for example. Blades sometimes report to the leadership here after we finish key assignments. You'll want to remember this place. And that about does it for our tour. So, what do you think? Pretty amazing setup, right? You can't wait to join Blade, right? Okay, Lynn, seriously, that's enough. We're not here to make a sales pitch. We just want you to have all the facts so you can make an informed decision to join us, or not. Now that you've seen where and how we work, hopefully it made a good impression, but your decision will be just that, your decision. In any case, let's head back to the barracks. Secretary Nagi will be waiting. Honey, we're home! Yes, very amusing. Who wants a fresh cup of tea? Thank you, Ms. Gu, but I can't stay long. I just wanted to pass along a request from your commanding officer. Commander Vandom? Hmm. Does it have anything to do with our new arrival? Correct. He stopped by while you were out on your tour. He said he'll come back, but that I shouldn't wait to ask you. <laughs> Here we go. I bet I can guess. You probably can. He wants to fast-track our new friend here for blade duty with a training assignment. What in the hell are we waiting for? As he put it. The commander does have a way with words. <laughs> Makes even my pitch sound smooth. I explained about the memory issues, but he didn't see it as a problem. And to be honest, given our current need for blade recruits, I can't say I entirely disagree. Hey, it's not me you need to convince. Blade service is voluntary, remember? Of course. And I would never force or coerce anyone. Well, friend, what do you say? Can we count on you to do your part? I knew you'd make the right choice. Welcome to the organization. Elma, he can start on your team. You'll begin training immediately. Yes, Mr. Secretary. With pleasure. All right! Welcome to the Cool Kids Club! Now then, let's discuss that training assignment. We've decided to start you out on a probe installation, just to get your feet wet. I guess we should back up a bit. Here in New LA, we're using a specialized computer system called FrontierNav to help us deploy a sensor grid across Mira. A network of data probes that allows us to monitor conditions and collect all kinds of information about the planet. Expanding that grid and filling in the blind spots is one of Blade's highest priorities. Here, take a look at this. What you're seeing on screen is a terrain map that includes New LA and the surrounding landmass. 
As you can see, we've divided the area into a series of hexagonal blocks. We call these blocks segments. Together, they form our grid. We determined this was the most efficient pattern given the limited range of our probes. Based on it, we know exactly where we need the probes to go. Now we just have to install them. The sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. The Frontier Nav probes can also detect the general locations of living things in the vicinity, which comes in handy if we need to track down a blade or another citizen. Yes, quite handy indeed. So for this first exercise, you'll be heading here, to that white segment. Go there, install the data probe, and then come back home. Got it. East of the city. In that case, we can take the east gate out of the administrative district, right? We should be there in no time. I'll leave the details on the data probe installation procedure to you, Emma. Of course, Mr. Secretary. All right, you two. Shall we? Yeah! Training or not, let's go install the hell out of that probe! Man, am I glad we pulled an assignment to the east of the city this time. It'd be a long walk all the way back over to the west gate. Hold on. Are we even sure the east gate will be open? Last I heard, it was still on lockdown from all the high-level indigen activity. It was, but they just lowered the threat level earlier today. The gates are officially open for business. One of our teams must have gone out there and kicked some furry indigen butt, huh? Seriously? That was you? Cool. I don't think so. Those Grexes we took down were fairly routine. Definitely not something they'd lock both gates over, at least. <laughs> then I take my cool back. But wait a sec. You guys fought Grexes? The two of you? Hey, that's still pretty cool. They've been hassling a lot of teams lately, especially how they hunt in packs and all. Let's not get too excited. Confidence can be good. Overconfidence can be fatal, especially when you're new. Yeah, you're right. But enough talk. We've got our mission to deal with. Let's head out. Roger. That probe isn't gonna install itself. Let's get to the East Gate, shall we? You don't think that one Sinicula could have killed all these Simias? Unless... Unless... what? This is bad. What's bad? I don't follow you. That Sinicula. It's a tyrant. Huh? But it looks just like any other Sinicula. Think about it. Your typical Simeus is way higher up on the food chain than your typical Sinicula, right? Usually, we'd find one Simeus standing over three or four Sinicula corpses. But here, the tables have been turned. And I don't see a single trace of any other indigens in the area. There's only one explanation. That Sinicula is a tyrant. Let me check the Blade Report database. If there's a tyrant this close to the city, someone must have run across it. Bingo. There was a Sinicula Tyrant sighted not too long ago, but it was a couple of segments further out. It could have followed the blade that spotted it back towards New L.A., or come here to feed, or who knows what. 
That's crazy. I can't believe there's a tyrant right on our doorstep, and HQ isn't doing a thing about it. Well, don't forget why they sent us here in the first place. Frontier Nam's range is still limited. Oh, right. They couldn't track it if there's no local code. They must have lost it when it went off the grid. designation is given to creatures that pose a special threat in the moon. That doesn't always mean raw strength. Some tyrants will actually register as low rank when you find them out in the field and engage them in combat. But don't let that fool you. If a creature shows up as a tyrant, you can be sure it's got at least one nasty trait or ability to speak of. The system can't account for everything, though, so don't let your guard down, no matter what rank it assigns. Even some of Blade's very best teams have come back with serious injuries after running into a tyrant in the field. If they come back at all. As long as you understand the risks involved. Lynn? Count me in. The same goes for everyone in New L.A., but if we're gonna settle here on this planet, we're gonna have to get used to dealing with tyrants now and then. Besides, if I need to, I can always run away while it's busy chewing on one of you guys. <laughs> fair enough. But don't push it, okay? Either of you. If we can take it down, great, but if not, even just luring it away would be a moral victory. As long as we buy enough time to install the probe, we can use Frontier Nav to track it, or any other tyrant that comes this close to the city from now on. Just make sure you're ready before we attack. This'll be tougher than anything else we've faced. It didn't have to be like this. We should be content just to be safe. Nice work, Lynn. You fought well. You did too. Now let's get down to business and install that data probe. If we stay here for long, there's no telling what other playmates might show up. This beam of light indicates a frontier nav site. It marks the ideal spot to bury the probe. Okay. The probe should be ready for insertion. I'll just boot it up. Thanks, Lynn. The top half of the cylinder contains the probe itself. The bottom half is a laser. It dissolves the soil so the probe can burrow to the proper depth. We tried just planting them on the surface at first, but we kept running into problems with the local wildlife damaging the goods. Burying them is going to save us all a lot of time and headaches in the long run. We all set? Yes, ma'am. Whenever you're ready. Why don't you do the honors? You can launch it right from your comm device. Give it a try. We just need to give it a minute to reach the target depth. And installation complete. We are now online with a solid connection to Frontier Nav. Excellent. See, at the end of the day, there's really not much to it. The hardest part was calculating the ideal probe locations, 
We need them spread out evenly to maximize data collection. Yep, planting probes is easy. And the more we plant, the more likely we are to find missing crew. So anytime you see a probe site, there's no excuse not to plant that sucker. That'll do it for your training. Let's head back to the barracks and report to Secretary Nagi. Commander Vandom. Well, now, look what the cat dragged in. Sorry we missed you last time. We could have come to meet you at HQ, you know. Indeed. I suggested as much. Twice. And we know how much I enjoy being told what to do. Anyway, I hear you tangled with a tyrant way out of your league. On a training mission, no less. That was reckless. And goddamn magnificent. So, Commander, to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit here today? Well, I can't just ask Nagi to do everything for me. I'd be out of a job. Hey, I delivered you the new recruit, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, you won the bet. Don't worry about it, all right? I'll settle up with you later. You know I'm good for it. The bet? I'm sure I'm needed elsewhere. If you'll all excuse me, Commander. Well, that wasn't obvious at all. Huh. Look at you two. I swear, you're like two children excited about a new toy. Look who's talking. I don't recall ever seeing you file a request to personally train a rescue before. Is that so odd? It is before we'd even asked him to become a blade, little miss stick in the rear. Usually I ask when I don't get your slang expressions, but something tells me to just let that one go. Enough about that. Where are your manners, anyway? I still haven't been introduced to our new recruit here. Commander Vandom is Blade's top officer. In a past life, I was chief engineer on the White Whale. Same idea, basically. Someone has a problem, I fix it. You follow? Huh. <laughs> Not much for conversation, are you? So you still haven't told us why you're here. From the look of things, I'm guessing this isn't a social call. You don't think? No. So let's cut the crap and get down to business. Ha! Sounds like you're learning my expressions just fine, Elma. Anyway, first we need Chatty Cathy here to choose a division and pull an assignment. Pretty much everyone in New L.A. works for Blade, in one of several different fields. Helping to explore Mira, or to maintain order in the city, or... Well, you remember Nagi's speech, right? There are eight different fields in all, and each one has its own branch within Blade. Officially, they're called Divisions. Naturally, you'll want to choose one that best suits your personality and your talents. Let's start with the Pathfinders. Pathfinder's number one responsibility is planting data probes, like you did on your training mission. It may not be the sexiest job, but important? You bet your ass it's important. We've only been on Mira two months. We don't know jack about this place. The more probes we install, the faster we can get our bearings here and give ourselves a fighting chance. We've already detailed how important it is we expand the Frontier Nav Network ASAP. So, for the time being, I'll just remind you of the highlights. It helps us keep Blades safe. It helps us keep the city safe. And most important of all, it's the key to locating the missing parts of the lifehold and recovering the rest of the human race. Okay, next up, Interceptors. You met Akalov and Evans, right? Irina and Gwen, this is their division. Interceptors have one main duty. 
Protect New L.A. and everyone in it from the wildlife here on Mira. Right now, this is probably our busiest division. Interceptor's right shotgun for the research eggheads. They escort VIPs around, and they help any other idiots who get caught out there with their pants down. Next are the Harriers. Remember Doug Barrett, the scale pilot conducting the test flight with Lynn? He's part of the Harriers. If you think of the Interceptors as defense, Harriers would be New L.A.'s offense. They specialize in preemptive strikes on clear and obvious threats. But only on clear and obvious threats. They're not meant to go out and just blast any indigen that moves. And you got your Reclaimers. These guys are in charge of finding the other pieces of the White Whale. Among other things, that is. Including anything of ours left behind after a battle. Skill debris, weapons, personal effects. It can get a bit morbid, frankly, but it's gotta be done. Until we're up and running here on Mira, and have this place completely figured out. Everything we brought from Earth needs to be treated like it's irreplaceable. Also, the search for the lifehold. That's mostly on the Reclaimers. Next, Curators. Curators are the first to scout ahead to unexplored territory, bringing back whatever samples they can get their hands on. Fruits, bugs, sticks and stones, you name it. It's not all picking berries, though. Being a curator also means being the first to encounter unknown indigens. Next? All right, prospectors. Prospectors do, well, prospecting. They poke around, looking for minerals, resources, and whatnot. Things we need for everyday life here. We packed all the essentials we could on the White Whale, but that won't last forever. We need to be able to replenish our water and fuel if we want to survive. And sooner or later, we're gonna have to figure out how to replace things from scratch. From the socket on a Skell's knee joint, right down to the frying pan in Lynn's kitchen. Without these guys busting their butts, we'd have no future to speak of. Next up, Outfitters. All of our ground gear and scale weaponry is developed in conjunction with private arms manufacturers, or AMs. Outfitters are Blade's way of supporting these AMs. They'll seek out anything that might inspire new weapon ideas, and even assist with testing new prototypes. Finally, the Mediators. These are the folks who keep everything hunky-dory with John and Joan Q public. Any problems a civvy has, they come to mediators. Fight with your neighbor, mediators. Lost cat, mediators. It's not a division for everyone. You need to be a jack of all trades, and a people person. Someone with my charming personality? Probably not the best mediator. But if you got what it takes, it's a clutch role, keeping things cool on the home front. All right, so I think that's all eight divisions. Any idea which one you'd like to join? Don't fret about it too much. Whichever you choose, you still have a lot of freedom in how you operate. Mediators can still get out there and mix it up, hunt indigens, whatever. And if a Harrier wants to take a break and settle an argument, that's their prerogative, too. To be honest, even though it's sort of frowned upon, you can actually change your division whenever you like. So there's really no reason to stress about this. All right, you ready to choose? Yeah, and we're on pins and needles here.
Then it's settled. All right. Thank God that's over. By the power invested in me, yada yada, you're officially a blade. Congrats, and welcome. I know you're gonna do great. Now for the job. Let's get down to brass tacks. Nelson's team has gone missing. Last contact we had, they were installing a data probe out in Eastern Primordia. Then, nothing. Hmm, Nelson. Pathfinders, right? Are we talking indigents here, or what? Your guess is as good as mine, but they did have a skell with them. You'd think they could hold their own, or at least run away. All right, we're on it. We'll head to their last known location and go from there. Report whatever you find ASAP. Of course. Let's move out. Roger that. Damn. I knew we would have heard from them by now. It was definitely fighting something. But this damage, it's not the usual claw or bite marks. No signs of a team. If they were eaten, we'd know it. So did they walk away, or were they taken? Right. Either way, they couldn't have gotten very far. Let's keep looking. Hold up, Elma. Check this out. I'm picking up an Earth-based IFF signal coming from that direction. It's Pathfinder. That thing over there, maybe? It doesn't look natural, does it? No, it doesn't. It looks like trouble. And look at this. I'm picking up readings for other life forms, too. Multiple signals. Moving around inside the structure. Elma, you don't think. I think you're right. Look at their movements. They're controlled, orderly. They're definitely not wild animals. Now the question is, are they native to Mira? Or are they visitors like us? And if so, from where? You think it's one of the forces that destroyed Earth? Let's not jump to any conclusions. It's a big universe out there. Of course, we shouldn't rule it out either. Should we call this into HQ? Yes, but not from here. If we're picking up their signals, they might be close enough to intercept ours. You there! Drop your weapons! <gasps> Stay calm. We don't want to provoke them. Earth aliens, surrender now! They know about Earth? You may have been right after all, then. Stand down! Did you already forget my first lesson? Fighting is a last resort. Our friends here appear to be able to speak our language. Which means we need to find out if diplomacy is a viable option. You're right. We come in peace, and we're willing to negotiate. If you have any Earth alien prisoners, we'd ask the conditions for their release. If you don't, we'll leave you in peace. No negotiations. No conditions. We have our orders. All Earth aliens must die. They're off guard. Slide knife. Move 
in and do some damage. Lock this! Upper hand! So much for the diplomatic approach. What's the deal with wanting us all dead anyway? Yeah, I wonder. They did mention they were following orders. Maybe someone higher up their chain of command would be willing to negotiate. Lynn, can you give us an approximate location for that IFF signal? Let's see. This seems to be originating from that building over there. Then we'd better get moving. There's no time to lose. dead. You killed them all. In cold blood. Fortune did not smile upon them today. Nelson. You filthy Earth aliens do not belong on this planet. You seem more fluent than the others. Are you in charge? I am called Glenna. I command this squad, Earth Alien. Now it is time for you to surrender. Hello, Glenar. I am called Elma, and I command this squad. If this planet is your home, we apologize for intruding. We crash-landed here after our ship was damaged in an attack by unknown adversaries. We were hoping we could negotiate a peaceful settlement in exchange for our friends, but... Peaceful settlement? Your words are wasted on us. All we can promise Earth aliens is a swift death. Alma. Right. We tried. Looks like survival of the fittest it is. Fine, then. Seeing as you know we come from Earth, I'm guessing there's a good chance we might have a score to settle with you anyway. I don't get it. Why would they be so bent on killing all humans? Who can say? Whatever the reason, this is dire news. We should let the others know ASAP. 
Let's call it in and head back to HQ for a full debrief. Roger that. And here I just started to hope we'd finally escaped all this. Escape! Yes, escape! Tatsu also won escape! Friends! Friends that leave Tatsu trapped! <laughs> More Xenos? What should we do? Stay back, Link. What do you think, Rook? Finally! Dance of Freedom! Tatsu thanks you! Interesting. One of the vegetables is sentient. Talking potato? <laughs> I wonder if it tastes different, too. I know what we're having for dinner tonight. You don't know it yet, new guy, but I'm a pretty mean cook. You are mean! Mean and cruel! Tatsu, definitely not potato! Tatsu, explain this to dumb and smelly prone when they take Tatsu, but prone not listen! Will never listen. Oh no, on blue day, Prone first set sticky feet on Mira. Especially Tatsu. Tatsu witnessed Prone abuse firsthand. At this rate, entire Nopon race in danger. Yes, Nopon are endangered species. So really, friends have social responsibility to protect Tatsu from danger. Uh-huh. What do you think, Elma? Bake or fry? Wait a minute. The beings who captured you, big brutes in armor? Little pointy ears? Yes, prone! And they're a more recent arrival here, is that right? They're not native to this planet? Not native, recent! If friends want more details, friends must promise to protect Tatsu. Only then will Tatsu talk. Right. Alma, you hold him. I'll do it. Tatsu will talk! Tatsu will talk! Friends not get no fun sense of humor is all! <laughs> so if I understand correctly, this is your homeland. The Nopon people are native to Mira. And then just recently, the Prone show up and quickly hunt you to the edge of extinction. Is that right? Not just Prone. Prone and their nasty, evil buddies. Lots and lots of them. Their buddies? You mean other alien races? Other hungry alien races. They all gang up on Nopon. They do horrible, terrible things to Nopon. Someday, Tatsu will turn tables and eat them for a change. You'll help Tatsu? Protect Tatsu? Oh, happy day! It's settled then. In return, Tatsu will accompany friends back to their village. What do you think? Take him with us? He seems harmless enough. And he'd be a good source of information on Mira and the Pro. All right. We can debrief him when we report to Commander Vandal. As long as he passes the quarantine scan, we can bring him back to New L.A. Right. Let's get that out of the way. All clear. Then Tatsu can join friends? Dance of joy! New friends are friendliest friends ever! I know! Tatsu has special thank you gifts for friends, for saving Tatsu's life! Tatsu will lend it to friends for free! Lend? It's not a gift if you don't give it. G -g give it away? For always? For free? This would be insulting to friends and to Tatsu. No Nopon merchant worth his salt and pepper could do such a thing. Tatsu is grateful, but Tatsu not insane. What? It's insane to think if someone saves your life, you might actually show them some real... And he's not even insane. Friend, do you ever get lost? Tired of bulky maps and flawed memory? There is a better way. Friends, this is your lucky day. Presenting Follow Ball. 
Follow Ball is number one ultimate best super secret must have no pod item. If friends get lost out in wild, friends just follow Ball of Light to safety. And now it's yours for free tomorrow. Uh, for now, anyway. Really? Follow Ball? That's the best name you could come up with for your super special thing? Meh, meh, meh. What would friend prefer? Fancy name no one understands so friend can feel smart? <laughs> now, time for no pond dance of generosity. I don't know. Is that thing really gonna be all that useful? What if it's a trap or boom? It just blows up in our faces. Ah, oh, yes, that reminds Tatsu. If follow ball get damaged, Tatsu need to charge friends full price plus restock fee. So much for Dance of Generosity. Nelson's team is a real blow. But the fact we're not the only visitors on this rock is even worse. They made it clear they want all humans dead. For all we know, they may be related to the forces that destroyed Earth and followed us here. Wonderful. I'll report this to Secretary Nagi, see if we can't bolster our defenses. Just one last thing. What the bloody hell is this dancing turnip doing here? He's actually a potato. T Tatsu not turnip or potato. For last time, Tatsu is not food. Now, on behalf of Planet Mira, Tatsu welcome all Earth people and offer a friendly treaty of friendship. Um, yeah. Right. Anyway, we were thinking he could be a good source of general intel about the planet. Exactly how useful that'll be remains to be seen. Oh, don't you worry about a thing. Friend's totally safe now that Tatsu is in town. Tatsu, watch over and protect friends. Especially weak, pathetic Lindley with her thin, bony wings. You mean my arms? Look who's talking. And who said anything about you coming with us? You can stay here, you greedy, annoying little cabbage. I'm sure there's a salad here that could use you. Meh, meh! Tatsu, stay here! F friends would leave Tatsu behind? It's for the best. You said yourself your people are endangered, and the Xenos that captured you might still be out there. You'll be safest here in the city. Mm, agree. G -g 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 Tatsu got a beat! Friends will want Tatsu along. Friends need Tatsu along. How so? What? Well, that, uh, th that, of course. This planet have many helpful Nopon that Tatsu can talk to. Other Nopon can share information for friends. Hmm, that might be useful. That right, that right. Most Nopon not like Tatsu. Nopon can be shy. Nopon can be difficult. Most Nopon never trust friends or even talk to friends. But Tatsu? No pun love Tatsu. Tatsu used smooth talk and winning personality to get friends good info. Hmm, the tater tot has a point. Uh-huh, more like an ulterior motive if you ask me. T Tatsu perish the thought. Tatsu intentions are pure, Linley. Pure as snow. Linley intimidated by Tatsu's strength and smarts, but do not worry, Tatsu is true friend. Strength and smarts, huh? That's really not what I'm worried about here. All right, then it's settled. Small Fry here will accompany you three out in the field. After all, we can use all the info we can get. Seriously? We have to babysit this thing? You're the ones who picked him up. Besides, would you really want to leave him with another team? Maybe not. Unless we were invited to the meal, I mean. 
is he? Already getting along like peas and carrots. He can be your charge, Liam. Oh, come on, Commander! That's not funny! I've got my hands full out there! This is so unfair. Back me up here, would you, Elma? I'm sure Elma has no objections. Right. As you say, Commander. Done and done. Welcome to Blade, Tater. We'll be counting on you. Yes, sir! And it's a Tatsu. Oh, one thing Tatsu forgot to mention. No pun are pacifists, so friends need to defend Tatsu, keep extra super safe in any battle. Tatsu VIP diplomat, after all. Why am I not surprised? So much for him watching over and protecting us. So, Rook, feel like you're starting to get the hang of things? Of course you are. You've taken to it like a fish to water, just like Elma and the Commander said you would. Just the same, let's review the key points, and I can fill in some extra details. Blade's top priority right now is to secure missing pieces of the lifehold. You remember that much. Countless people are frozen in the lifehold. It's the key to restoring humanity. Up until we ran into the prone, our biggest concern was that wild indigents would stumble on the lifehold and damage it somehow. But now there's a more pressing threat. Intelligent alien races who are intentionally trying to destroy us. So, our search has new urgency. We need to find and retrieve all of the lifehold ASAP. And the best way to do that is by expanding the reach of Frontier Nav. The more probes we can install, the wider we can scan, and the faster we can find bits of the lifehold. So our primary focus going forward should be to travel around Mira installing data probes. As many as we can, as fast as we can. I can't stress enough how important this is. You still with me? Good. Then let's move on to the other pressing threat that Blade has to deal with. Hostile indigens. There's no real delicate way to put this. Any wildlife that poses a clear threat must be eliminated. The life hold is our future, but we can't ignore the present. We still have our duty to keep New L.A. safe. And sometimes that duty requires enacting coordinated strikes to solve problems before they can do real harm. We are the newcomers here, it's true. And they're usually just out to defend their territory. But sometimes it really is them or us. And we have to make sure it's us. Don't get me wrong. It's not like we run out there and light up anything that moves. Only Blade HQ can choose targets, and they tend to keep them strictly to creatures that pose a significant threat to our survival. In order to contribute to this cause, operatives are asked to form into squads to take on special missions. These squad missions, as we call them, don't get posted to mission control like your other, more typical assignments. Rather, HQ transmits the details directly to all of us at the same time. Basically, they want as many people to know about them ASAP, so they can be taken care of ASAP. I'm sure you can imagine, but these missions aren't your run-of-the-mill little fetch quests. It's 
not the kind of stuff just one or two blades could handle on their own. That's why squads can have as many as 32 members. And it's why we ask members to sign up to a squad beforehand. We can't have blades play musical chairs whenever this kind of emergency hits us. But just remember, Squad missions are not mandatory. You don't have to drop everything you're doing just to take one off. HQ has no way of knowing what every blade is up to when these missions arise. If you're busy with something else, they'll understand. They need to trust our collective judgment with these things, and well, so far so good. And I think that about covers the basics, right? Search for the missing pieces of the lifehold. Install data probes to expand Frontier Nav. And take on squad missions when you can to keep us safe. Got all that? Good. We're counting on you. And briefing adjourned. Thank God. All right, well, it's getting pretty late, isn't it? Yeah, let's call it a night. Oh, Tatsu's so excited to sleep in real bed. Lily can show Tatsu to his room now. Your room is right over there. Oh, it's the perfect size for Tatsu. Wait, what? Tatsu know what that is? That refrigerator. Who'd go in there to cool off? <laughs> I guess you are smarter than you look. Well, Tatsu not want to brag, but uh, wait a minute. Tatsu see what Lily did there? Want to team up? else now? Tatsu can't possibly eat any more corn. Don't worry, this is something new. One of Earth's great delicacies, foie gras. Foie grub? Foie grub sounds delicious. Maybe Tatsu try some when Lily finished cooking. Can Tatsu help? Actually, you can. In fact, I can't make it without you. Oh, really? I just need one little favor. Of course. Tatsu is at your disposal. What can Tatsu provide for Chef Lindley? Your liver. M -m 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 Tatsu is here to serve, not be served, Lindley. Oh, just remembered. I have goose liver. Lindley did that on purpose. Lindley is vicious and nasty. All right, everyone. Dig in. Man, oh man. Delicious. Lucky thing I happen to be in the neighborhood. You say that every time, Commander, but you always arrive as we're setting the table. Oh? You don't say. Hmm. 
All right, listen up. We found something in Noctilum thanks to Frontier Nav. That's northwest of here, Rook. Looks like a piece of the life hold. That's great news. Damn right. Look at this. Oh, friends mean Nightglow Woods. Is that what the Nopon call it? We didn't have names for anything here, so we've been using Noctilum for that whole region. <laughs> well, that's a silly name. And Nightglow Woods isn't? Ahem. <clears throat> Moving on. Right, sorry. According to the Pathfinder's report, there's a large number of indigens in the area, but thankfully no sign of any intelligent life forms. No, no, that's wrong. Nobody visit Nightglow Woods all the time. Yeah, well, like I said, no intelligent life forms have been reported, but it never hurts to be cautious. Mm. Friends patronize Tatsu. Nopon proud and brave people with rich history, you know. Pipe down, small fry, or I'll make that nickname come true. <laughs> we'll have you check in with Lao's team first. They're already on assignment installing probes in the area. We don't have a fix on the light bulb signal, just a general direction. See if they've got more info. Got it. Hey, hey. Look who it is. Lau, it's been a while. It has. Are you going to introduce me to your friends? Where's Danny and Boris? These are my new team members. As for Danny and Boris, we had a bad run-in with a powerful indigen. They didn't make it. I see. Hey, look. I'm sorry. I hadn't heard. It's okay. And what's up with this onion thing? You using it for rations or something? Tatsu not onion or ration. Tatsu is no pun. Brave and distinguished people with long history on Mira. <laughs> it talks. Where'd you find this thing? Rescued him. He was about to become lunch for some prone, these hostile Xenos we ran into. He's agreed to serve as our guide here. Wow. Okay. And you? What's your story? Are you really as young as you look? Sure am. Thirteen years old inside and out. I'm Lin Lee Koo. Well, hello, Lin Lee Koo. You must be something to be able to make Elma's team at thirteen. All right. What about you? I'm Lao Huang. I head up Pathfinder Team Velisarda. Good to meet you. Got an interesting crew here, but they seem capable enough. I chose them personally. I figured. So, I heard Nelson's whole team got wiped out by some nasty new Xenos. Is that true? Yeah, those prone I mentioned. We're not sure if they're the ones that destroyed Earth, but their tech certainly seemed advanced enough. Really? We better watch our backs. By the way, we picked up a life hold signal in the direction of Noctilum. Have you or your crew come across anything? Where? Around here? I take it the answer is no. Yeah, this is the first I've heard of it. We bumped into another team and they didn't mention it either. I see. All right. We were hoping your team might have a lead or some more info, but no such luck, huh? 
Well, thanks anyway. We should go. Hey, hold up, hold up. Mind if I tag along? But your assignment? We're more or less done here. We just need to report back. Well, until you do, you're not done here. Well, give me a break, Elma. The rest of my crew can handle the paperwork. We're talking about a piece of the life hold here. I've never even seen one. That's way more important. And besides, you might need the help. Finding it or handling the indigents that get in your way. Now, come on. Hmm. The life hold piece should be further ahead. Friends will climb big rocky mountain? B but how? Tatsu has tiny feet, stubby, flimsy limbs. No spine either. But the turnip does have a point. I don't think there's any way we could scale those cliffs. Agreed. We'll need to take a detour. Let's try going around that way. Friends, hold up! Something coming ahead! Like the proud no pawn among you, we have inhabited this planet since times of antiquity. A friend knows about no pawn people? Yes, yes, of course. No pawn purchase my wares quite often, you know. They're excellent, how should I say, suckers? Uh, I think you mean customers. So, Mr. L, you've lived here a long time? Just L, and yes, such a nice, quiet world. The wildlife and insects are also docile, such gentle dispositions. Indeed! Yes, friends lucky Tatsu here to protect them from becoming main course. Yeah, because we can toss you out as an appetizer and run away while they're snacking. Well, the creatures here are hungry, yes, granted. Gentle disposition, my butt. It's just... Hmm. What? Well, who can blame them with all the commotion here as of late? Not that we're pointing our fingers at you, mind. No, it's those prone sons of bastards. Yeah, we're not their biggest fans either. We loathe them. They have ruined our once peaceful life here. Ruined! They are all, how should we say, ass caves. Close enough. By the way, Elle, you seem to speak our language quite fluently. Well, yeah, most of the time. We owe it all to that wreckage back there. What a treasure trove. Especially the data terminal we found inside. It is the ultimate portable snack for satisfying our insatiable curiosity. Wreckage back there? You think that's our piece of the life hold? Certainly sounds like it. Elle, can we take a look at this terminal you found? Of course, of course. 
Thanks. Lynn, see what you can make of it. On it. Okay. Yep. This is library data. Let me see. Huh. So it is. The unit L stumbled upon must be part of the Lifehold's archives. So, not the core then. The entire ship was torn to bits when we came down. The odds of any single piece of Lifehold being the core aren't very high. Yeah, I guess not. Now, now, Lynn, don't be glum. The Lifehold archives are the sum total of all human knowledge. This is still a really big find. We should try and secure it ASAP. Yeah, you're right. Now might not be the time. Why not? Why else? The ass caves. We just came from there and thrown are all over the wreckage. What? Uh-oh. This is bad. Very bad. Let's go. Apologies, we didn't mention it before. We assumed you'd abandoned it. Allow us to show you the way. After all, as you say, too many heads are better than none, right? Uh, close enough. Extinction is duty. Our duty is gangly. Gangly? So that's what you call yourselves? Indeed. Humanity is a blight, a great cancer festering on the cosmos. Our job is to eradicate it. Humanity is here in peace. What gives you the right to destroy the life form? Is that what you call it? So quick. Your language. Your technology. And yet, so dangerous. You must be purged. This is our calling as Gangly. The cause of the righteous. 
Then you'll forgive us for defending ourselves against your righteous cause. <laughs> well, this should at least be more entertaining than stamping out the lives of your sleeping friends. Cannot escape us on this planet or any other. Sooner or later, your kind will be cleansed. Mr. Scolidia, now quickly. Such a shame it cannot bring back that which was lost to you. But this is spilled milk over the dam now. I just don't get it. What do they have against humans? I'm not sure how they wound up on Mira. But you saw the milk. That is definitely them. Who? The aliens that destroyed Earth. The ganglion were among them. What? It wasn't just them. They were definitely one of the forces involved in that battle. I'm absolutely positive now. That scale-like mech we just saw? Check it against the NLA records and I'm pretty sure it'll come back with a perfect match. <sighs> anyway, we really appreciate all your help here, El. But we need to be heading back now. Not at all. We only wish we could have done more. I wish we could compensate you somehow. But honestly, there's nothing left for us to give. Compensate, you say? Hmm. How about allowing us to accompany you back to your city? You want to come back to New L.A.? Why exactly? Well, treasure trove was destroyed. Without the archives, we're afraid our thirst for knowledge cannot be quenched. But an entire Earth city to explore? Such an experience would provide compensation beyond compare. The thought makes us tingle. Okay. Hmm. What do you think, Rook? You think so? This guy? I don't know. I'm just not seeing it. I mean, he talks funny. And he's got one of those blah faces, but he doesn't seem like a bad guy. Lindley right. All Miran natives are good, honest folk. Looks like you're outvoted. Besides, we can't be like the Ganglion. We want to live in harmony with all the other species here. Then it's settled. Excellent. Let's be off. The early worm is for the birds. Right. Let's start heading back. We should report to the commander at once. Hmm? 
Either you picked up another Xeno, or someone's been holding their breath too long. This is El. We met in Noctilum. We are El Siruf, if it please you. This planet has been our home since days of yore. Oh, a long-time resident? That's why we brought him back. His knowledge could prove invaluable. I'd like to request permission for him to stay in New L.A. We can't allow just anyone to waltz into our city on a whim. How much do we know about him? I know enough. Enough to say that we can trust him. All Mirren natives are good, honest folk. Yes, Tatsu, yes. Anyway, Elma, you do seem quite sure of yourself. All right. I'll share the responsibility. He can stay. If that's acceptable, Mr. Director General. If you're both certain, so be it. Many thanks, good sirs. Truly, we are walking on the ninth cloud of seventh heaven. Please call us L. The rest is far too formal. And honestly, we prefer L anyway. More importantly, Colonel, what happened with the Lifehold unit? I see. So it wasn't the core after all. No. We confirmed it was one of the Archive units. Unit number 07. 07? That would be the LC repository, wouldn't it? One of three, but yes. The entirety of the Library of Congress archives. As I recall, the data was stored on units 07 through 09. Well, thank God it wasn't the core. This situation could have been a lot worse. I wonder. Hmm? The LC archives contained nearly every published work in mankind's history. It's not like it's just a bunch of random books and manuscripts, you know. It's a history of human thought, a record of opinions and emotions. I mean, yeah, sure, but... So if you stop and consider what it means to lose even a third of that data, it's a cultural and historical loss of catastrophic proportions. <clears throat> We do have parity data for the Archives here. We know which unit was lost, so hopefully we can find some way to restore it. Let's hope so. Moving on. These Ganglion, you're certain they were involved in the destruction of Earth? Here, see for yourself. The left shot is from a battle over Beijing, the right from our encounter. Son of a... Is it possible this is their native planet? Tatsu told us they aren't from here, and El confirmed it. They're recent arrivals. Very recent. So, either it's one hell of a coincidence, or they followed us. Considering they appear to be systematically targeting the lifehold, I'd say that leaves no question they follow us here. Could they possibly know the purpose of the life hole? Maybe the whole reason we haven't found the core yet is because those scumbags already trashed it. If so, none of us would be here talking in the first place, would we? Uh, you got a point there. This information doesn't leave this room. But we've had several recent Pathfinder reports of Xeno sightings and contact. They may or may not be Ganglion. But regardless, I propose we double down on our defenses going forward. That'll be all, Elma. Please continue hunting for any signs of the life of Yes, sir. Remember, the clock is always ticking. We have to find that unit. Today. That is a great idea. 
Linley. Sometimes Tatsu wonder if Tatsu is too cute, too adorable. Oh, yeah? As leader of Blade Team, Tatsu need cool and tough image. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Is Linley even listening to Tatsu? What? Sure I am. Hey, what if you got a tan? A little color could do wonders for your image. In fact, I've got the perfect lotion for you. I'll even help you apply it. Well, that's... Uh, okay, if Lily insists. Wow, thank you, thank you, Lily. Tanning oil smells so sweet. And it's a bit sticky. Tanning oil? <laughs> that's just plain old honey. It's the crucial step for a perfect chicken saute. Honey marinade. Lindley! Tatsu, not chicken! Tatsu is Tatsu! Oh, right. How could I forget? Lindley is not funny! Tatsu is not happy! Okay, folks. Hope you're hungry! <clears throat> I can't get over your cooking, Lynn. That was delicious. Thanks, Gwyn. Glad you liked it. I hope it was enough. If I'd known we were expecting company, I definitely would have made more. Yes, yes! Then maybe Tatsu could eat full portion! <laughs> Sorry, Pint Size. What Gwyn lacks in stature, he more than makes up for with his monstrous appetite. He's kind of a pig. Okay, first of all, I'm taller than you. And second, you just ate almost double what I did. Who's the pig here? I'm assuming you didn't just come here to argue. What's going on? So, we had this extermination order up around the northern coast. Some violent indigens that got a little too touchy-feely. Apparently banged up a few outfitters. Pretty standard stuff. We're all prepped and about to head out, and then bam! Another job comes in from Commander Tank Top. I mean, I know we're the best and all, but seriously. Sounds rough. All right, you take the indigents and we'll take Vandom's job. Thank you, Colonel. Let me walk you through the intel. These images I'm about to show you are from a probe in Oblivia. Is that a ship of some sort? Can't really tell from that distance. Yeah, it's hard to grasp the scale with such long-range images. Whatever it is, it's getting hammered. Friends must do something to help poor ship. Tatsu will not stand for this injustice. Says the one guy who never actually fights anything. It's difficult to say for sure from this, but that craft on the right, I bet it's ganglion. It shares aspects of their mech design. Our thoughts exactly. The assignment is to get there and confirm one way or another. We don't know who built the ship that's under attack. But as the commander so elegantly put it, our enemy's enemies might be our pals. I'm inclined to agree. If we're gonna settle here, Akira, we'll need all the friends we can get. That's for sure. All right, thanks for the info. We'll take it from here. Thank you, Colonel. Welcome to Sandy Bum Canyon. A.K.A. Oblivia. Huh? Olivia? Friends really name it that? You know I said Oblivia. Uh, Lindley, listen to Tatsu. This place always have sandstorms. Sands get everywhere. Therefore, Sandy Bum Canyon. No pun ancestors name it just fine ages ago. Or does Linley think she better name her than native Mirin peoples? What? I... no. Good. Tatsu accept Linley apology and forgive. This time. <sighs> Strange. There's nothing here. It was hard to tell the scale of it from the grainy images. 
that ship should have at least been big enough to spot from here. Hmm, yeah. Huh? Elma, look! Another new Xeno species. Hang on. Maybe I can pick up what they're saying. Impossible! I'm telling you, just us is impossible, okay? Stop talking like that, would you? We have to do this, right? For everyone back on the ship. But, but, but how are we supposed to destroy the turrets? This place is likely crawling with ganglion, no? So they're not ganglion, at least. Yeah. It sounded like they're fighting against them to me. Friends, friends, Tatsu knows those are Manon. Manon appeared on Mira maybe year before friends? Hmm. I know that sound. What is it, Alma? Just Tatsu, the Ganglion, and now these Manon. Don't you find it a little odd that we can understand these alien languages? Hmm. Good point. Right? Must be something like that. But we haven't been using our comm devices when we've been talking with Tatsu. Well, Tatsu is fluent. More or less. Tatsu, did you study our language? Friend's language? What language are we speaking right now? What language? No pun, of course. Friend's no pun very good, by the way. See? Xenoforms have different anatomy, physiology, different vocal setups in general. It seems likely they would struggle with our pronunciations. And yet here we are, conversing. But if they can't even produce the sounds, this shouldn't be possible. No, it shouldn't be. Unless our words aren't being perceived as sounds at all. Maybe our intent is getting across some other way. But how? Could it be something about this planet? <laughs> Someone sounds pretty intrigued, huh? Well, what if it is some kind of new phenomenon? Aren't you curious to learn more? All right, now you're starting to sound just like L. Okay already. Friends talk less, help Manon more. After all, Tatsu have reputation as hero pawn to uphold here. Sure. Right after a quick snack. I'm not sure how much we can help, but we should at least make contact. Agreed? here to help. Ganglion are enemies to us as well. Enemies, you say? That means you're friends to the Manon, yes? We are Manon, you know. Ours is an advanced civilization. You can tell, right? The Ganglion desire our technology. But Earth human heroes have come to save us, right? I'm right, right? I hope so. Why don't one of you tell us what happened? Okay, so in other words, if we can destroy their weapons, your ship can escape. Exactly! They have three turrets set up around the area. You see them now? 
We need you to destroy them all, okay? Please? Got it. We don't want the ganglion controlling the airspace here any more than you do. We'd be happy to help out. You mean it? You'll help us? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you! Get a load of this! were indisputably superior. Here they come! Engaging! Lay down the fire! Oh. This one's got your name on it! No. Now, melee attacks! No! Oh. 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 you like oh. knocking oh. people around! Oh. Leave oh. it to me! Oh. 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 Move in and keep the rhythm Leave going! Leave it to me! Oh. One down. Two to go. Let's move. Here they come. should be all of them. The Manon will be thrilled. Let's head back and meet up with them. Huh. No sign of the Manon anywhere. Where would they go? Maybe back to their ship? Friends, look! Over there! Boom Booms! Let's check it out.
anything about your body being a mimeosome, do you? He's losing his biocirculatory plasma. I can't fix this here. Elma, I need you to contact the mimeosome maintenance center for me. Ask them to have a type 085 left arm and transfusion ready ASAP. You got it. I'm going to have to take you offline for a bit here, okay? We'll resuscitate you back in New L.A. Don't worry, you're gonna be fine. I promise, okay? Welcome back. So, how's that new left arm feeling? Man, what a relief. You're lucky Lynn was with us. If she hadn't acted as fast as she did, you might have bled out entirely. We could have lost your whole unit. Oh, it was nothing. Before we go any further, I wanted to apologize. I should have realized you might have forgotten about this, but... As you probably noticed, the body you're inhabiting is artificial. We call them mimeosomes. Mims for short. Mimeosomes are designed to mimic human physiology as much as possible. The whole point is for us to forget about them. That way, we can still enjoy the things we love. Like cooking. We're all like this. Every single crew member that escaped on the White Whale. 
All of us are Mims. But why would friends all become robots? Well, just think about it. It could have taken decades to find a new planet to call home, or even centuries. We had no idea. Who would want to crew the ship if they knew they were going to grow old or die along the way? Hmm, Tatsu see Linley Point. Our actual bodies are waiting in the life hold, in stasis with all the human passengers. We control our mimeosomes remotely from there. So you see, that's why it's so important for us to find and protect the life hold. Our lives are on the line here too. If the life hold were to stop functioning for any reason while we're still there in stasis... Everyone, including every Mim in New L.A., would drop dead on the spot. That reminds me, something else you should know. It's possible for us to switch to another Mimeosome if these bodies fail or become too badly damaged. But the process requires equipment from the life hold core, the central unit of the whole operation. So what if Gangly and her big beasties smash friends' robot Mims? We wouldn't be able to come back yet. For now, we need to consider these Mims as precious as we would our real, actual bodies. Don't get reckless out there just because you're in a menu, so... That's an order, you hear? One last thing, and I need to trust you all to keep this quiet. It's sensitive info, so HQ has only been telling team leaders about it. Can't have a panic on your hands. The readout on Blade Tower. You've seen it? It's not some kind of special clock or anything like that. It's a countdown. Big number counts down to what? The life hold shutting down. What? The life hold lost its power source when we lost the White Wing. It's been running on backup ever since. We need to locate the life hold and get a power source in place by the time that percentage reaches zero. And if we don't? These bodies will no longer sustain us. We'll die. Not just die, Lynn. Die out. It would mean the end of the human race as we know it. The end? of everything. Well, on that cheerful note... Okay, Rook. You good to go? Then let's report back to HQ. I'm sure the commander will want to hear about this himself. Right. Welcome back. Your floppy friends here filled me in on everything. You did good. Just watch yourself out there, Big Shot. You're still new at this, and we can't afford to lose you. We only got so many spare parts to go around. You mean that, are we? You took a nasty hit, no? He'll be fine. I patched him up myself. That's great, isn't it? We were worried sick, you know? We're still new in town. Wait, then Manon will live here too? Correct. The NLA government has reached an accord with the Manon people. A friendship treaty. It guarantees their safety and provides them a place to settle here in the city. That's great to hear, Dr. I wasn't sure how you'd react. Hmm. We don't need to be from the same species to be able to recognize our common ground. Someone told me that once. That was a lifetime ago. That's quite a memory you have. A blessing and a curse, believe me. So you're not stuck here too, right? We were just cruising along out in space, you know? And suddenly, our nav system goes all screwy and we find ourselves here. Which is pretty weird, considering our tech is far more advanced than anything Samar's got. You saw how bad they wanted it, yeah? Samar? I thought it was the ganglion that attacked you. You don't know about Samar? Interstellar Federation, Samar? I mean, they only rule over a radius of six million light years or so of space. Six 
million? But that would span multiple galaxies. Well, yeah. The Gangrene are a run-of-the-mill crime syndicate. Just one tiny part of Spore, you know? Just one tiny part. My good man, in the spirit of our agreement, we'd appreciate any intelligence you'd be willing to share. Even our skills are powerless before them. Continuing to persist here is meaningless. It will only serve to thin our ranks. After all this time, we've finally found a clue that may lead us to the Great One. With respect, the phenomenon space surrounding this planet is only 800 exodents in diameter. Three days at light speed is more than enough to scour it thoroughly. If the Great One or the Samar Federation homeland were here, don't you think we would have found something by now? Hmm. It's one thing to engage the enemy all the way out near that forsaken chunk of rock they call Earth. But then to be swallowed up by that strange light and dumped off here in this primordial hellhole? Are we cursed? And trapped with humans of all things. It's like some sick joke. If someone told me this was death, I'd believe them. All the more reason to persist. We must retrieve it if we ever hope to escape the confines of this phenomenon. Grandmaster Luxor. Speak. I bring news. Hmm. Really? And he can be trusted? Most interesting. 
interesting. Yes, most interesting proposal indeed. was a meal. I'm impressed, Lynn. My team could learn a thing or two. I'm glad you liked it. But you didn't stop by just for a meal, did you? No. You know me, Elma. It's about a job. It would seem to us the good sir would like to pick our brain. Of course, we will gladly let him in one ear and out the other. Almost, El. Almost that time. An alien mech? What type? No idea. It doesn't match anything on record as far as I can tell. No one's seen anything like it. It looks abandoned too. Totally ripe for the picking. Oh man, you're giving me goosebumps! Right? It's located here. That's pretty deep in Noctilum. No wonder you wanted to talk to El. Exactly. But here's the rub. The Ganglion are after it, too. From what we can tell over Frontier now, they've gone after it several times already, and failed. Well, yes, they mustn't surprise us in the least. That's Tainted Man. Tainted? Doesn't sound good. They are savage beasts. Ferocious. Insatiable. He's talking about these. We didn't run into any the Tainted are territorial. They only dwell deep within a specific part of the forest there. Although it doesn't seem right to even call it a forest anymore. Why do you say that? Because the Tainted devour any and all living things, apart from other Tainted, that is. Y you mean even mighty Tatsu boxes? Indeed, you would be swallowed whole. The Tainted would make no bones about you, I'm afraid. It must be formidable to be defeated again and over and over. But if what Elf says is true, it could work in our favor. No. Our bodies are artificial mates. If the Tainted don't perceive us as living things, we might be safe. Let's back up a sec. You reported all this to the commander? Our top priority above all else is supposed to be searching for the life. Are you suggesting we set that aside to try and recover? Exactly. Commander Vandom is why I'm here. Specifically requested I enlist your team. It's just as you say. There's no time for us to screw around. And we still absolutely need to find the life hold. But remember, the fact is we're also dealing with hostile Xenos here. Xenos who destroyed Earth and want every last one of us dead. Xenos who also seem to want this man. Desperately. It's that important to them. Right. What if it's a secret weapon, powerful enough to tip the scales? Feels like a bit of a long shot, to be honest. But okay. Even if we can't use it, we should at least keep it from the gang. Count us in. Any objections? 
No man. Glad to hear it. But if we're going to take this on, we'll need to keep it quick. Roger that. Elle and Topsy, you hang back. Unlike us, the teams will target you guys for sure. Oh, most considerate of you, good sirs. Oh, Lily! Lily care about Topsy after all! Well, of course. After all this time watching over you and fattening you up, I'm not about to let my prize turkey go to some rabid indigens. Everybody set? Yes, sir. Ready to go. Someone's excited. Just doing my job. Speaking of which, it's pretty amazing you made White Whale crew at your age. You have family here? My mom and dad passed away. They didn't make it. Ah, uh, that day? The attack on Earth? No, sir. It was before that. An accident. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. My parents were both design engineers who worked on the White Whale project. But there was a mishap with the primary engine test. Still, it's thanks to them and people like them that the rest of us are all still here, you know? They made the White Whale spaceworthy, so they didn't die in vain. At least, that's what I like to think. I see. So they gave you a spot on the White Whale to say thanks. Thanks to your parents for all their hard work. It's a debt I try to repay every day. Helping out folks any way I can. Don't misunderstand, Lau. Lynn earned her spot on the crew like anyone else. It was her talent and determination that made it happen. Her parents' positions provided an environment for her to learn it, but that's it. Lynn got to where she is now, entirely on her own. It's okay, Alma. No, she's right. Sometimes I talk before thinking. Sorry about that. Don't be silly. You don't need to apologize to me, sir. Now, shall we get going? Hmm, which way? If we go straight, we should hit some caves that lead to our destination. Okay then, let's go. We're getting close. Yeah, it's just ahead. Uh, Elma? Relax. They won't bother us if we don't bother them. Yeah, I know what you mean, but... No signs of any radiation. Infrared, motion sensors, I got nothing. This thing's dead as a doornail. Oh man! So it's basically a skill, right? But the make is nothing like ours. Or the ganglions. Where could it be from? Oh wow! I can't even tell what its armor is made of! is this feeling? It's... oppressive. It's pulsing off of this thing. It's almost as if... the ghost of its pilot is somehow still lingering. And that material there, at its core... 
It's dark matter. This must be their handiwork. No. No idea. All right. Well, we got what we came here for. Let's call in the salvage choppers and get it out of here. Lynn, contact Commander Vandom. On it. back to just thinking about walking past all those tainted again makes my knees all wobbly tatsu have just the thing friends fuel up with tatsu tasty lunch box tatsu what are you doing here tatsu knew friends must be hungry so tatsu rides spinning plane here to deliver hot meals Tatsu hero pod, after all. Oh, you idiot! You're gonna attract the tainted! Relax, Linley. After quick lunch, Tatsu fly back home on spinny plane before anyone notice. And how exactly do you plan to do that? All the spinny planes have already left. You're gonna have to walk back through all those tainted. You won't last ten seconds out here! Huh? <sighs> Maybe we can get another chopper here in time. Too late. <laughs> Looks like somebody else wants a hot meal. Tatsu, don't move an inch, you hear? Alpha? Good lord. Everyone, take him down. Get the hell out of here. <gasps> You've got to be kidding me.
Was that thing trying to help us? Maybe. Or maybe it was just toying with us. Well, I think I could have taken it. <laughs> we should get back to New L.A. I want to stop by the hangar and get a better look at that skell. Right. Good work, people. Commander? What are you doing out here? Did they seal off the area? Actually, I was waiting for you, Lynn. Hmm? Why me? You want to tinker with that new alien mech? Well, I mean, duh. Good, because I'm putting you in charge of research. You help reel it in, you get first crack at it. You and your team risked a lot out there. You earned it. Really, sir? Everything's set up. They're expecting you. Yes, sir! Oh my god, thank you so much, Commander! Hmm... Is this even a skell? I mean... The external armor, maybe. But I'm not detecting any known materials or components for the purple frame part. In fact, I can't even find a power source. Maybe it's like an idol or something? To some alien god or whatever? What about a cockpit? Or any space for a pilot? Let's see here. There is a cavity in the middle of the chest area. If this thing is a vehicle, that'd have to be the cockpit. Hmm. Perhaps it's not a weapon? It was abandoned, after all, and in that godforsaken place. But it was also worth the ganglion sacrificing all those soldiers to try and recover it. Surely it must hold some value. Granted. Now the question is whether we'll be able to uncover it. Ms. Ku is one of our best, but we can't expect her to work miracles. If you ask me, that's time better spent studying that Ares of yours, Elma. All right, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about, would you? Let me explain. The Ares is what Elma... Random. Oh, uh, right. Those are your orders. Have I made myself clear? Quiet. You seem displeased, Gajarg. Perhaps the great hero of Roth does not enjoy taking orders from the Ganglion. Perhaps he feels it beneath him. It appears nothing is beneath me of late. Hmm. I still hear the anger in your voice, the way you spit out the words. Accept your fate. Then you might find me a more accommodating master, Prince Jarg. Oh, but how rude of me. Should I have said, former prince? I never cared much for titles, Counselor Luxar. It's Grand Master, damn you! The entire Ganglion organization is at my command, as are you and your people. I will not remind you again. Oh, but how rude of me. My sincere apologies, Grand Counselor. Hmm. 
Have you also forgotten the price the Rothian people will pay if you fail me? I promise you, it will not be pretty. What will happen if the humans beat you to the prize? Need I remind you of that as well? No, you need not. Then mind your tongue, former prince. Unless your pride can feed and clothe your people. Filthy cur. Yet I will suffer him gladly. If he can help lead me to you, oh great one. Irina's team is calling for reinforcements? Hmm, afraid so. So what's the situation? Turns out we found a piece of the life hold out in Oblivia. Those guys are after it. What? We found a life hold unit? That's great! It's also news to us. Unfortunately, it's not the core. But it's in primo condition, and every piece counts. Irina's team just happened to draw the job. So, what happened? Trouble? Trouble. Seems our ganglion pals have a base right near there. I see. And their soldiers have come between Arena's crew and the Lifehold, is that it? Bingo. That's why we need to move quickly. There's no time to lose. We'll leave immediately. Send us the mission data on Frontier Nav. I've already got it here. I'll send it to everyone's comm devices. Good luck. Just be careful. The clock's still ticking. We can't afford to lose our best people. Not 
picking up any more hostels. Friends get all of them? Tatsu not even break a sweat. Right? There were so many of them. But they barely put up a fight. Could this have been a diversion? We need to catch up with Arena's team before it's too late. Let's move. Whoa, that was fast. And you were so outnumbered and everything. Nothing can stop Team Tatsu. Tatsu eat baddies like them for breakfast. Says tomorrow's breakfast. <laughs> Colonel, ma'am, well done out there. Likewise. Now what happened to Irina and Marcus? Where are they? They're up checking on the life hold unit. And you've had no sign of hostels? No. Dead quiet. Hmm. Okay. It just felt so much like a... A trap! Irina! Marcus! Run! Hmm? Marcus! Right! My little surprise. That voice. The woman from Noctilum? I knew they had to be holding back their big guns for something. Here it is. Well, aren't you the clever one? What you just saw was only a prayer. An amusement, if you will. Blowing up our life hold amuses you? <laughs> well, perhaps amusement is not fun. More like a deep satisfaction. Like curing an illness or scrubbing an ugly stain clean. The stain of humanity. Of course, the true pleasure will come from watching your real bodies burn. <laughs> Not that I won't enjoy trashing these crude puppets of yours. It'll certainly be enough to tide me over for the time being. Till the real fun. Then they know about the light bulb and things. You primate. We know all about your crime. Your fool's errand to gather these trinkets. Your race against time. Human extinction is inevitable. I could simply wait for you to Where's the fun of that? I much prefer to see the looks on your faces. Melting fear as you twist it and That's enough, you Samarian witch! Enough of your talk. Enough of the pain you've caused the universe. The only agony would be suffering you any longer. Oh, please. What would a mere human know of our history? She is mine. Irina, your team has the others.
just... Why would these aliens be this determined to destroy us? Honestly, if I had to venture a guess, I'd say they're afraid. They fear humans. They feel threatened. We threatened them? We didn't blow up their planet. We didn't hunt them halfway across the galaxy to wipe out their whole goddamn species! Lieutenant. I'm sorry, it just brings back a lot of emotions. I'll be fine. Let's go. If you say so. Colonel, with your permission, my team will report back to the city. I can't thank you enough for your support. What was that about? Irina had a younger brother. He was best friends with Gwyn, actually. But he... He didn't make it onto the White Whale. We lost him when we lost Earth. Everyone's got a story like that. Not that it makes it any easier. the life hold, but... Yeah, Irina already briefed me. I'm just glad you all got back here safe and sound. Wish we could say the same for that archive unit. Another swath of Earth's legacy. It's irreplaceable. Yeah, well, so are all of you. So cheer up, huh? Come on, let's get you guys fed. Dinner is on me this time. Okay, this is weird. Very weird. Tatsu is suspicious. What, a commander can't treat his troops? If you're trying to thank us for this job, there's really no need. This time it was Arena's team. Next time it could be my team. Any blade would do the same for us. Okay, fair enough. Besides, Lily cooks best. Hey, thanks, Tatsu. Just for that, I'll make you some dessert today. <laughs> there you go. The Spud's right. No one cooks like Lynn. Thanks, Commander. If you wanted to join us, maybe I could... Great. Let's eat.
Citizens of NLA, this is Secretary Nagy. Those of you that have served under me, here or on the White Whale, know I'm not one to mince words. So, I'll get right to the point. We are at war. Even now, the hostile alien force known as the Ganglia is marching on New Los Angeles. We know they possess Skell-class ground-based units, and we have reports of unidentified flying weaponry as well. Director General Shosan is attempting to open a dialogue. But our enemy has shown no signs of being open to negotiation. In light of all this, it is my duty to prepare us all for the worst. And this is why I've called an emergency assembly of all Blade Divisions. To be clear, none of this changes our mission with regards to recovering the life hold. But in the short term, it is absolutely crucial that we protect our city. Not just for our fellow humans, but for the Mana and our other Xenoform allies as well. New Los Angeles is home to us all, including our brothers and sisters yet to be awakened. In that spirit, the Manon have agreed to use their ship to ferry all non-combatants out of the combat zone. This is a temporary measure, but also a very good example of how we all, human and xenoform alike, must sacrifice and contribute to our common cause. For those of us who will fight, I promise you that once we prevail, any Mimeosome damaged or destroyed will be fully restored. Troops, a trying battle awaits us, but we must repel the coming invasion, no matter what the cost. We're counting on you. You all heard what Nagi said. Ganglion forces are closing in on the city. I'd love it if Shosan could negotiate our way out of this, but we all know better. They've made their feelings about humans pretty clear. Our team has been assigned the most crucial defensive position. The Administrative District Gate. If we lose Blade HQ, that's it. We've lost the war. We have to expect the Ganglion know this, and we'll hit it hard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no pressure there. Do we know where everyone else is stationed? Irina's by the entrance to the Industrial District. Doug's on standby until we make visual contact with the enemy. And Lau's guarding the hangar. Tatsu will manage supply lines. Use Nopon connections to keep key materials stocked. Thanks, Tatsu. When this is all over, I'll bake you into a delicious meal. <laughs> Tatsu heard you say into, Lindley. And you, Rook. You ready? <laughs> to be honest, me too. You'd be a fool not to be scared. So Elma is scared too? Of course. Bravery isn't about never being afraid. Bravery is being afraid and moving forward anyway. Let's move out. Time for rain. This is Brigadier General Jack Phantom, Supreme Commander of the Defense Force of the Colony of New Los Angeles. I'm sorry, Supreme what? Where are all these titles coming from? He's trying to lay on some crap tips. He wants to sound like the leader of a huge organized army. Yeah, but Brigadier General?
Well, it's just a title. He can call himself Colonel Square Tash for all I care. If it gets the ganglion to listen, I'm all for it. Great. Now I'll never get Colonel Square Tash out of my head. Attention, ganglion. Your army has unlawfully crossed New LA's defense perimeter. You have 10 seconds to hold your advance and agree to negotiate. If you do not comply, we will have no choice but to interpret your actions as a declaration of war and launch our counterattack. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All units open fire! All right, remember, our job is to destroy any ganglion that so much as think about going through the gate here and infiltrating the city. Got it? Roger. Talk to us, Roger, too. Down, Lynn. We've cleared the area. No further hostile signatures detected. All enemy craft in the combat arena have been destroyed. Roger that. We did it? We did it! I think you're right. That was way too few troops. They must be testing our defenses. Ugly aliens got one look at Hiro Pantatsu and surrendered. Ha! <laughs> Something tells me no. We need to get back to the city. We're fighting inside the city? I know, man, I know. We tried to avoid it, but now we have no choice. Better to risk damaging the city than losing it altogether. The hostile forces have crossed the perimeter. They've entered LA Everyone panic! 
Let's move. Rack Telling me you losers can't even handle a bunch of humans? Please! Targon wants to join fight! What? Why would you want to do that? Although, I suppose if we don't pitch in now, that fool Luxar will never get off our backs. Very well. Have it your way. <laughs> of enemy scales have entered the city. Agreed. Let's give every ganglion we can find a nice, warm welcome. Roger that. Elma, we got a situation in the commercial district. Two really nasty SOBs. They're tearing through everything we throw at them. Secure your area and get over there ASAP. Copy that. We're on it. Come <laughs> on. 
right to be afraid, little girl. Let's go. Lynn, stay calm. Don't let them into your head. We've faced worse than this before. And we've won every single time. Don't forget that. I know. Estimated your enemy. You two are the only ones left. And you expect me to kiss your hand and beg for my life? I'd rather laugh my way to the grave. Please, no. Wait. We don't have to continue like this. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Lost your nerve. <laughs> You're more useful alive. What? Go back to your people, your masters. Tell them we want no further conflict. Tell them the humans are willing to negotiate. That we can find common ground and coexist here, peacefully. <laughs> Don't tell me you honestly think you've won here, do you?
another city of innocence burns. All so they can lay claim to a single scalp? Was this truly necessary? I have become party to madness. was the mech all along. Oh, you're so quick. I can see why they made you the leader. <laughs> and now the leader is ours. So you see, you didn't win anything. You lost. You sure about that? <clears throat> huh? Your people managed to swipe that alien mech out from under us. I'll give you that. But our mission was to repel the invasion and defend New L.A. at all costs. Nothing more, nothing less. In that, we succeeded. <sighs> For now, maybe. But you, you were sent here to take the city. And as far as I can tell, it's still standing. So I'd say you're the only loser here. <clears throat> now crawl home, tell your ganglion leaders you were beaten, and deliver my message. Hurry up and go, before I change my mind. Our people can't coexist peacefully. We can't coexist, period. It's us or you, you arrogant worm. No negotiation, no compromise, and no mercy! Yeah, we made it back, but Marcus wasn't so lucky. What happened? He took an enemy missile barrage. What? He's gone? Listen, Lieutenant. We're going to find that lifehold core. And when we do, Marcus will be the first one back in a brand new state-of-the-art MIM. I promise. Yes, yes, just like Quinn, only taller and slimmer and with more muscles on his wings. And more handsome, too. Thanks, guys. No, seriously, thanks. I like this idea. We'll find Marcus the handsomest, strongest, most un like Mim around. Oh, you too now? So, Colonel, we lost the alien scout. Well, last I heard, we weren't even sure what it was. Doesn't seem like much of a loss to me. If only it were that simple. Man. The important thing is, we managed to repel the invasion force. We're still alive, and NLA is still standing. I'll take that as a victory. Hell yeah. The Colonel's right. We did good here today. We won. Sounds good. Actually, Irina, you guys should go on ahead. I have an errand to run with my team first. Roger that. Then we'll see you back at headquarters in a bit. Colonel. Let's go check out the hangar. Every 
last one of them! I'll kill them with my own bare hands if I have to. There's no excuse. This wouldn't have happened if I didn't order my men to leave their posts. You were just trying to help. It's okay. We should count ourselves lucky we ended up with so few casualties. Sorry to break up the love in, but you know, there must be something to that skull if they were this worried about it. I wonder. The bigger question is how they even knew we had it. And how did they know exactly where we were keeping it? <sighs> no way. Yes, at last. The Great One's Divine Vessel is mine! I beg you, O oh Great One, descend to this humble planet and guide I am yours to command! Working hard out there?
What should I whip up today? That is a great idea! Oh, Tatsu spilled yogurt all over himself. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, Linley's so understanding. Will Linley accept Tatsu for who Tatsu is? Well, of course. Now, while I heat the oven, you spread the yogurt down your back too, okay? Uh, okay. But, uh, shouldn't Tatsu be cleaning off yogurt instead? What? Don't be silly. We need it spread evenly for the tandoori sauce. <laughs> Tatsu is no chicken, Lily! Tatsu is Tatsu! Oh, right. It's tandoori chicken. Tatsu is not laughing. Tatsu is not laughing! Okay, it's ready! Now that hit the spot. I'm glad you enjoyed it, sir. I figured someone might show up unannounced, so I made a little extra this time. Great! Then I'll just show up for random meals as I please. That's... not what I meant. Okay, good news first. Some Pathfinders detected another piece of the life hold. Yes! Is it the core? Woohoo! Tatsu do dance of discovery! We don't know what it is, which is why we need you to check it out ASAP. The <sighs> coordinates we have for it are up north of New LA, in Silvalum. Oh, one sec. Silvalum? Correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, didn't we just detect signs of a ganglion presence there? That's the bad news. Which is why I'm only asking our top combat units to take this on. Understood. Consider it done, Commander. We'll get started immediately. I was hoping you'd say that. I talked to Lau's team as well, by the way. They're already en route. You'll rendezvous with them here. Good luck. I just pray this is the piece we need. There's not much time left. Wow! Hey. You can't be serious. Your entire team... gone? Dead. Killed by Ganglion. And it's all my fault. If only we'd gotten here sooner. What? You think you could have stopped it? What's it matter anyway? We can just bring them all back once we find the life hold, right? Hey, Lau. Look at us. The chosen few. All those people we left on Earth. They never had a chance. But us. We can be reborn. We get as many damn chances as we want. If we find the core. Without that, there's no chance for any of us. Look, we can talk later. For now, we need to get you back to the city. Let's regroup there so we can get you patched up. No way. What if it turns out to be the core and the ganglion get to it first? You can't let that happen. We can't just leave you here, Lau. You can and you will. I'll be fine until the Reclaimers can get here. Still... I'm sending you all the intel we have. It's further north from here. Sorry, I can't help. It's up to you now. Don't worry. We can handle it. Let's get moving. 
With luck, we can secure the life hold before the ganglion know we're here. Lynn. Yeah? Maybe you should sit this one out. The place is crawling with ganglion. That's why I'm going. Exactly why. I'm part of a team, and we have a job to do. If it's going to be dangerous, that's all the more reason for us to stick together. And I'm a lot more capable than you think, Lau. But I know you're trying to look out for me, and I appreciate it. It's not like they'll be killed. They'll just lose their mims is all. What's it matter anyway? Spot? That's weird. Tatsu don't see anything. Lynn, go ahead and double check the coordinates, would you? <clears throat> right. I have a bad feeling about this. Don't tell me. <gasps> Elma! I'm picking up multiple incoming heat signatures. We're surrounded! First time laying eyes on the proud people of Roth? Surrender, humans. We have you surrounded. If you put away your weapons and comply, you will be treated with the respect that warriors of your caliber deserve. Do as they say, everyone. We don't have a choice. Luxar's conniving has served them to us on a platter, which only makes the task all the less palatable. Why? Why would they fear our real bodies? This I do not know. If I did, I would gladly lay their wretched plans bare. Prince Jog? Luxar never ordered us to keep his secrets, only to remember his precious title. Take them away. Luxar? Is that the ganglion leader? Wait! 
First, I have a question. How has a noble species such as yours allowed itself to be reduced to such disgrace? What? The Ganglion have committed unspeakable acts all across this planet. Surely you must know that. They kill without cause or mercy. Why would you serve such scoundrels? Why sink so low? Mind your toes, human. Who are you to judge the Prince's actions? What could you possibly know of our people's struggle? Of how our homeland was torn away from us? It's true. I cannot say I understand your plight. But humanity lost its home, just like you. And yet we chose to stand up and fight the Ganglion. <laughs> the Ganglion have bought our compliance, yes. But make no mistake, the Rothians would never sell their pride. Prove it, then. Make a choice here that you can be proud of. The Ganglion would have us dismiss you as uncultured savages. But I see reason in your words and strength in your bearing. Very well. We will settle this the old way. Defeat us in battle. And yes, you will also win your freedom. Excellent. I will grant no quarter and expect none in return. Mercy would be an insult. But my prince, win or lose, Luxar will punish us. Forgive me, please. I can suffer those villains' unjust orders no longer. Of course, we all feel the same, Prince. But when the Ganglion hear of this... Roth will survive. Ours is a resilient people. We can weather this storm. Yes, my Prince. With you leading us, yes. Then it's settled. Let the battle begin. This is the Roth way. And one to be proud of. The sticks are raised!
Let the real battle begin. I thank you for this defeat. Our encounter has been most edifying. North of here lies a shadowy land of rock and fire. Jagged black stone lit only by scars of boiling magma. There you will find the ganglion strong. May the tides of war lift your fortunes! That guy was not so bad, huh? Yeah, he said they're mercenaries. Maybe we could convince them to fight for us. Great idea, Linley. Tatsu love kitties. I wouldn't call them kitties to their face, small fry. They'd slice you up, brine the wedges, add a nice buttercream sauce, then... Linley talking way too many details. Oh, huh, sorry. Was I saying that out loud? Linley is not funny. Hey, good news. Lao was just admitted to the maintenance center. Looks like he's gonna make it. Really? Oh, thank God they got to him in time. Let's hurry back and check in on him. Right. Elma? What is it? Nothing. Sorry. Just a little worried about Lao. Let's get back to New L.A. Grandmaster Luxar. <sighs> I thought I told you never to disturb me in this chamber. What is it? Sir, a message from Gajarn. You'll want to see it, sir. Counselor Luxar, this is mercenary warlord Gajarg, former prince of the Kingdom of Roth. It is with a heavy heart and deep regret that I must report to you that the Rothian peoples 
are unable to carry out your mission to annihilate the human race. We realize this means we will no longer enjoy the benevolence of ganglion patronage. So be it. The Rothian people will make our way as an independent mercenary force, effective immediately. We look forward to settling our debt with you on some future battlefield. Until then... Kajar, you traitor! I should have known those ungrateful rats would bite the hand that feeds them! <laughs> you seem to enjoy that, Prince John. Ah, but what a shame. If only I could see the look on what that overgrown slug calls a face. My prince, what has gotten into you? You disapprove? On the contrary, everyone loves a scoundrel. Is that so? Then we're in luck. From this day forth, we are lawless vagabonds, subject to no one. What say you to that, you Rothian scoundrels? Morning, Sleeping Beauty. Doug? Is this... the Lifehold? New LA, buddy. Sorry, no real body just yet. They saved your men before it shut down. Too bad, huh? Better luck next time you die. I see. Doug... It's... It's all my fault. Save it. Just rest. <sighs> Elma? Doug, you beat us here. So, how's he doing? He'll be up and around in no time. Why don't you go take a look for yourself? Say hi. Thanks. Doug, we need to talk. Can you spare a minute? Of course. It's about Lao. I have a suspicion. Well, it's more than a suspicion. Mm. Let's hear it. The Ganglion were struggling to retrieve that alien mech, the Vita. Lao suggested we go after it. He even planned the mission. So we extract it. And the Ganglion know exactly where it is when they come for it, with Lao's team away from guard duty. Oh, boy. In his last mission, he gave us coordinates for a lifehold unit he found. Turned out to be a Ganglion ambush. Too much to be a coincidence, Doug. Well, what do you think, Rook? You think he's a spy? Even if you're right, he saved our bacon plenty of times. We should at least give him a chance to explain himself. We owe him that much. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hmm, what 
should I whip up today? That is a great idea! Lindley, Lindley, what is Lindley making? Today is one of my specialties, pot pie. Pie? Did Tatsu ever tell Lindley pie is his favorite? Tatsu will even help Lindley make it. Great. Why don't you flatten out that crust? Tatsu will jump to it. How big does Lindley want crust to be? Oh, just big enough. To cover you completely. How many times Tatsu need to tell Lindley? Tatsu is here to serve, not be served. Oh, right. That does sound familiar. Lindley always say that, too. Lindley say that every time. Time to eat, everyone. Man, oh, man, Lynn. Somehow you manage to outdo yourself every time. It's all about the ingredients. Right, Tatsu? Right. Let's get started. Well, before that, I need to clear something up. Commander? I know you're wondering. After the bogus lifehold lead, we had the Pathfinders turned inside out. Sure enough, we found evidence that someone messed with Frontier Nav. They planted that phony data. You mean... We got a spy. That's right. One of our own is working with the ganglion. This was an inside job. One question, Commander. Like we don't have enough to worry about. And here I am, sending you all out right into that death trap. Damn it. <sighs> I don't know what else to say, except I'm sorry. I hope you'll forgive me. Ah, Tatsu like Muscle Man better when he's angry and yelling. Zip it, Pipsqueak, or you'll be seasoned and fried by breakfast. Tatsu has a point, though. It's not like you to dwell on mistakes, Commander. Especially when they weren't your mistakes to begin with. Wouldn't you agree? Well, but... No buts about it, sir. And no more apologies, okay? We survived, after all. Now let's see that surly taskmaster we all know and love. That's right. Your orders, Commander? Well, put it that way. Who am I to argue? <clears throat> all right. Touchy-feely time is over. I've got your next assignment. We need you to head out and fix a key data probe that's on the Fritz. It's way out in Northern Silvalum. We'll get you the coordinates. Yes, sir. With pleasure. Repair missions are my specialty. That's why we picked you. That and... The Ganglion have been quiet lately. Too quiet. I don't like it. Yeah, I've been thinking the same thing. In your report, the uh, Rothian, was it? He made it sound like they've got a base tucked away. Some place with black rocks and lava. That's gotta be called for us, yeah? I think it's a safe assumption, yes. Well, anyway, as you might have guessed, the idea of a big old ganglion base here on Mira is not exactly thrilling. Agreed. And with Lao sidelined, we're gonna have to pick up the slack. Yep. So let's get that probe fixed, all right? We're really getting down to the wire here. Where in the hell is that core? Mm, yes. 
Aren't you the most beautiful thing ever? We are gonna have so much fun together. Grandmaster Luxar. Grandmaster, sir! I heard you the first time, imbecile! Lower your voice in my presence. It's the recently completed Zufark, sir. Reese made off with it. What did you say? Why would she do that? Why does everyone in this confounded organization think they can do whatever they please? <sighs> Ugh. Yep, that is definitely one busted probe. Hang tight while I run a diagnostic and see what I can do. Do it. All set. Sorry for the wait. Well done, as always. All in a day's work. One thing, the problem we had here wasn't unique. It's bound to affect the other probes sooner or later. We probably should patch them all to be safe. Uh, is Lindley serious? Friends want to go stitch up every probe on all of Mira? Tatsu will be Grampy Pond before friends finish. Simmer down, Potato Skin. It's not that bad. I fixed this one manually, but now I can upload that patch and fix all the other probes throughout the network at once. Phew! Whatever Lindley talking about, Tatsu believe her. Tatsu do dance of relief not to fix so many probes! Yeah. We have planted a lot of them, haven't we? And really, what's it gotten us? Hmm? Not just us, everyone. All of Blade, all of NLA. We spent all this time on Frontier Nav, you know? What if we never find the core? Then what do we do? We've searched all over this planet looking for the Lifehold core. What if it's not even here? What if the whole thing smashed to bits when it crashed down? You know that's not possible. Do I? Our consciousnesses aren't here. They're controlling these MIMS remotely from the core. It can't have been destroyed. In fact, it has to be somewhere relatively close, or we would feel the lag. You're right. I... just... <laughs> it's okay, Lynn. I know you're tired. It's been a long couple of months. Being inside these MIMS takes its toll on all of us. It's only natural to feel like this. But I promise, it's going to be all right. <sighs> what were they thinking when they designed these things anyway? Hmm? What did they mean? These MIMS. Why would you make an artificial body that can cry tears? So embarrassing. Well, lots of reasons. Tears lubricate the eyes. They flush out dust and debris. And unwanted feelings, too. You feel better, don't you? Hmm. I guess those mim makers knew what they were doing after all. Well, if I ever see them, I'll be sure to tell them you said so. Thanks. Hmm? Friends hear that? There! 
but what is it? Really big. Bigger than Caravan Big. Bigger than even Legendary Frontier Village Big. Its transponders are responding to our IFS signal. We have to assume it's hostile. Take cover. before we hit the same course. Wait. Something that size, on that course, must be targeting in LA. <gasps> we can't let it get anywhere near the city. We have to put a stop to it here. Come on. Here, 
as a team and we fought well. I only hope there aren't any more like this back at their base. If these things hit the city in numbers, we'd have no chance at all. Exactly. Exactly another reason we need to find that life hold core as soon as possible. What do you mean? Remember what the Rothian prince told us in Silverland about the ganglion? Apparently, they fear actual human bodies. I don't know why that is, but it might be the key to victory. Or the key to survival. up today. about did I hear him talking to Lau whatever it was it didn't sound very good we'd better get to the hangar ASAP boy have you lost your mind you know damn well what that data means to us to our entire race! Of course I do. It means an end to this giant lie. I've been waiting a long time for this. <laughs> Commander, what's going on? Ask Lao. We caught him stealing a data terminal with classified intel. Stealing intel? Explain yourself, Lao. <laughs> you should have let me die that day, Elma. You knew the truth. That I was a ganglion spy. What? I had my suspicions. But I didn't want to believe it. <laughs> your mistake. And it'll cost you. The data and your newest skull, the Prague Ares. The ganglion will appreciate the gift. Boy, I am gonna kick your ass so hard, your real body will feel it. Not if you value your precious data. Wow! What the hell's going on here? 
Oh, look at this. The whole gang's coming out to say goodbye. What the hell, Lau? Hold your fire. He's got the only copy of that data on his mem. Damn it. A little insurance policy. Sorry, Doug. You'd betray all your friends? Your entire species? Well, I'm no big fan of theirs, believe me. The talking cats or that giant leech. But the ganglion and I share a common goal. And that is? Think about it, Doug. You know the answer. The hell I do! You've lost it. I lost it. Goodbye. Wow! All right, what exactly happened back there? Well, you all know how FrontierNav uses the White Whale's trajectory data to simulate potential crash scenarios, then cross-checks it with our probes to narrow down possible lifehold coordinates. Well, all that work paid off. We finally got enough probes in the ground to accomplish what we've been trying to do. In other words, we can isolate every possible landing zone and scan them to find the lifehold core. What? Oh, oh! Are you certain? That's what the eggheads tell me. Time to do dance of discovery! So what are we waiting for? <clears throat> Lau? I don't get it. I think I do. That's right. He took the terminal that was analyzing the data and deleted all the backups for good measure. We already started over. But the coordinates were calculated from a massive amount of accumulated data. Redoing all the work we did up until this point could take weeks, if not more. Which means the life hold would run out of time first, and then... poof. Bingo. Then we have no choice. We have to find Lau and recover that terminal. For now, let's assume he's headed for that ganglion stronghold we heard about north of Silvalum. We'll need to hurry. I just hope that Gajarg guy was telling the truth. Everything is riding on this mission. Don't screw it up. That goddamn good for nothing. What the hell is he after?
this reading? It's the Prague Aries. This puts its signature in the middle of the large chamber on the other side of this structure. You think we found Lao then? He can't be far. Let's go. Okay. Um... I have no idea how to open this. Hmm... All right. Let's look around and see if we spot another entrance. And how about door up over there? Something like this was going to happen. The clock's ticking. Take it down quickly. What do you think it is? Part of a machine? Silly friends, it obviously keyed to Big Door from before. I actually think he's right. I, uh, okay. Wow. This way we can ride our scales in. Exactly. Expected no less from NLA's number one team. Wow. <laughs> Ganglion really are afraid, you know. Even Luxar, their leader, trembles at the idea we might get our bodies back. That's why he had me stick around here, to keep you out of his tendrils. You knew we had no choice. We had to chase after that stolen data terminal. None of this will matter soon. Once they destroy the Lifehold core and all of us with it, this'll all be over. You don't sound so excited anymore. Of course I'm excited. Why wouldn't I be? We can finally stop living this goddamn lie. We'll all be free at last. We'll all be dead, Lao. How does that free anyone? Instead of reuniting with our real flesh and blood? Wrong. We're already dead, Lao. Our 
flesh and blood burned away with the earth. Listen, Lau. We don't have time for a debate here. We came here for that terminal, and we're taking it back with us, whether you like it or not. Of course. You wouldn't want to hear this, would you? Or have them hear it? Fair enough. should have died out along with the Earth. We should have let nature take its course and accepted our fate. You don't believe that, Lau. If you did, you would have never volunteered to work on Project Exodus in the first place. Or on the White Whale's crew. Well, I was a believer once. I honestly thought we could pull it off. I knew we couldn't save everyone, of course. Billions of people in that time frame. <laughs> but a cross-section of races? Religions? Yes, it felt like all the usual politics disappeared. People from different countries had to come together. There was no other choice. This was survival. So I signed up. So what happened? It was all lies. If you weren't rich, or connected, or part of the first world elite, you got left to die on Earth. What? Oh, yes. The only reason people like you and me got on board the White Whale is because they could use our skills, exploit our talents. But everyone else, all those countless souls boxed up in your precious lifehold core, the same elitist bastards that decided they're the only part of humanity worth saving. No. If you don't believe me, ask Elma. I can't say I agreed with how all the passengers were chosen. But I hardly see how it justifies this madness. We were acting to save the human race. I never understood why humans separate themselves off. A race, a class, religion, country, age. As if it matters in the end. On a genetic level, the differences are insignificant. No, not insignificant. Not to humans, but really. How could you understand, Elma? Sorry, but I won't let those bastards purge what made us human. I'll kill us all first. Lau, look. I admit I had no idea about any of this. But killing what's left of us isn't going to solve anything. It's you playing God instead of them. How is that fair? Don't talk to me about fair. Is it fair what happened to my wife and little girl? Oh. That's why I volunteered. I didn't sign up for Project Exodus because I wanted to save the human race. No. I signed up for Project Exodus because I wanted to save my family. We knew there were no guarantees we'd be chosen, of course. We promised each other we'd accept our fate either way. But at least, this way, we had a chance. We had something to hope for. Hope was all we asked for. But there was never any hope. Not really. The decision was already made. We just didn't know it yet. These scum deserve to die, Alma. No one deserves to die, Lao. Tell that to Charmaine. And Chenshi. 
Tell it to everyone we left back on Earth. And you knew. You knew they'd seal the fate of all those people. And then you lied. You lied about why no one could know who made it onto this ship until after launch. The decision came down to saving a subset of humanity or total extinction. I stand by that decision. And I'd do it again. <clears throat> Enough talk. I don't expect you to agree with every decision that was made in the past. But I won't let you destroy humanity's future. Fair enough. I don't expect you to agree either. But that won't stop me! No more fighting, Lao, and no more excuses. The data. Go ahead, Elma. Go ahead and shoot, if you're so sure of yourself. Just don't hit the terminal. <laughs> so, what's it gonna be? The chest or the head? You've got a 50-50 chance. The fate of all humanity hanging in the balance. Gotta love those odds. So, what are you waiting for? <laughs> no, Elma! Not like this! Step aside, Lynn. If I can shut down his mim, there's still a good chance we can extract the data afterwards. No, damn it! That's not even the point! We're all on the same side here! a long time ago. But if someone promised me a chance of saving them, and that was all a self-serving lie, I... Who knows what I would do? Lily. It's disturbing, and corrupt, and disgusting, and yet... That's exactly what makes us human! Maybe... Maybe we really should have been wiped out of existence. But... But then... your mind I thought this was about them but somewhere along the way it became about me and about revenge it's over now so go the lifehold core has built in auto defenses it'll take them some time to destroy it if you hurry you might still make it in time he's right there's no time to lose Lynn can you finish the analysis here? It's technically possible, but without the full NLA mainframe working on it, 
It would take way too much time. Then we have no choice. Let's get back to the city ASAP. Lao Tu. Come back with us to New LA. Yeah, right. As if I could ever set foot inside that city again. It won't be like that. Not once everyone knows the facts, at least. They might not agree, but they will understand. You're naive, Lin. They lock me up and toss away the key. Or worse, a lot worse. Maybe, but that's on you. You have a lot to answer to. So either way, we're taking you back with us. <laughs> I'd rather be shot. Come on, Lao. Let's go home. Fine, whatever. But there's no time to evac me. You go ahead. But that's... Elma... He's right, Lin. Time is running out. We need to move. And fast. All right, then. Lau, we'll send some medics for you, okay? Just stay put. Until then, you're not allowed to die, you hear me? We'll see you back in New L.A. Sure. Great. You got it. Now, would you go already? Okay. Tatsu will split special lunchbox with Lao. Because Lindley says Lao not allowed to die. So Lao stay alive for Lindley or else, or else Tatsu kill him. So sorry, girls. Seems like Papa can't come to be with you just yet. Damn it. I'm sorry. We watch over each other until I get there. Tell me you got it. Yes, sir. Thank God. Let's get it analyzed. Commander, hold on. Lau's still back at the ganglion base in Caldros. He's seriously injured. Yeah? And? What exactly are you getting at? I know you aren't suggesting we help that backstabbing bastard. He tried to kill you guys. I am, but... He's been through a lot, Commander. You know his story as well as anyone. When we signed off on Project Exodus, we knew there'd be cases like Lao. Potentially hundreds of them. Look at Irina. She's still struggling with losing her brother. But we moved forward anyway, for the greater good of mankind. Irina didn't try to kill us. In fact, she's been doing everything she can to help further Blade's cause. Are you sure? Hmm? According to Gwyn, she's been acting strange. Reckless. Almost suicidal. He thinks maybe she wants to die. <sighs> it takes different forms, but it's coming from the same place as Lao. Of course, it's no excuse for what he's done, just putting it in 
perspective. Fine. We'll bring him in. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Commander. I wouldn't get too excited about it. Especially after I break every bone in his body. It's going to take a bit to complete the analysis. Let's regroup at the barracks. Brave citizens of New Los Angeles, this is your Director General, Maurice Chausson. Today, I come before you with truly joyous news. News that I have been longing to be able to share with you since we first set foot on this unknown world. Thanks to the tireless efforts of the brave men and women of Blade, we have finally, finally succeeded in securing the location of the Lifehold Core. Now make no mistake, recovery of the core will not be easy, especially as the Ganglion continue their persecution of our people. But as long as we forge ahead with the same determination and fortitude that got us this far, I have every confidence we will succeed in our mission. We will return to our natural bodies and take our place as living, breathing residents of our new home here on Mira. Until then, I ask you all to stand together in strength and courage as proud citizens of NLA. All right, Blades. You heard what the man said. It's now or never. So let's get right to it. Your mission is to secure the Lifehold Core and activate its backup power system. We'll have the exact location isolated in the next two hours. You'll leave as soon as we have coordinates. We're counting on all of you. Each and every single blade will participate in this mission. Godspeed. All right, everybody. Dig in. And don't hold back. I made enough for everyone. Tatsu helped with cooking, too. <laughs> wow, you really went all out. It smells amazing. Don't go hogging it all, Gwyn. Yeah, whatever. You're one to talk. Uh... How kind of you to desert us like this, Lin. What in the hell is this? We're going to war here, people. And you know what they say. Can't go to war on an empty stomach. Can't go to war if you're dead, either. Which is us if the life holds power runs out. For all we know, the ganglion are already at the core, getting ready to tear it apart. You still hungry? Mm. If we lose this one battle, we lose everything. We already understand that, Doug. But you heard what Nagi said. We have to wait while they pinpoint the core's location. Like this? You just don't get it, do you? No, Doug. You don't get it. What? You think you're the only one here who's worried? We all are. We're scared to death. That's why we're here. Together. Look, Irina... Lynn is just trying to keep up morale the best way she knows how. Yeah! Pick on Linley and you answer to Tatsu! <sighs> All right. Look, Lin. I'm sorry. I'm on edge. Worried, freaked out, all of it. Forgive me, okay? No. But bring me ten hot cocos, and we'll talk. <laughs> From that place you love, right? Okay. You got it. to all this trouble, so let's dig in before it gets cold. Tatsu liked this plan. Tatsu is starving! 
No, you don't have to ask me twice. Help yourself, Doug. <laughs> Roger that. Oh, man, am I stuffed. I couldn't eat another bite. Tatsu cannot move. Amazing as always, Lin. Thank you. Now I get why Arena and the Commander are always making excuses to swing by. That was delicious, Lin. Oh, you guys. Don't make me blush. I'm just glad you enjoyed it. Well, I should be getting back. Thanks for the eats. Shall we, Lieutenant? Yeah, we'd better go too. This was really great, Lin. Thanks. Yeah, this was fun, Lin. Indeed. It was a most enjoyable food ritual. All right. Good luck out there, guys. Elma, the analysis is just about finished. Gather your team and get over here. On our way. That's the Lifehold Core? The coordinates place it off the west coast of Caldros. It's no wonder we couldn't find it. It's way out in the middle of the ocean. Did it sink underwater? We'll find out soon enough. Let's suit up and get going. Secretary? Our survival as a species hinges on your efforts. Elma, we need your help. Please save us. We're all in this together, Secretary. My goal hasn't changed since I first set foot on the White Whale. You of all people should know that. I intend to see this through. That should go without saying. I know. It's just... we've put so much on your shoulders. You can make it up to me with a nice long vacation once this is all over. This planet fascinates me to no end. I'd love to take some time to explore it with no agenda. Oh, -ho! can Tatsu be Elma's guide? Of course, Tatsu do it free of charge. It's all over the house. Let me guess, El taught you that one? We sent the coordinates to every Blade team we got. Elma, I want you to act as commander for everyone out there in the field. I'd be honored, Mr. Chief Engineer. <laughs> I forgot how much I miss being called it. Commander makes me feel like some useless old stuffed shirt. Yeah, and shirts aren't your style. All right, team, let's go. Roger. Tatsu has lunches all packed. designed to sustain human life at all costs. The defensive shields that surround the core won't go down so easily. So in other words, we've nothing to worry about? I didn't say that. Remember, they don't need to break into the core. They just have to keep us out until time runs out, which is soon. Speaking of time, it's time to kick some ganglion butts. Yes, yes! Friends kick ganglion in butts. That's the spirit. I need you all at your best. Everyone's counting on us to see this through. And we won't get a second chance. All units, this is your commander, Elma. My team will take point. We'll breach the core, and then once inside, attempt to activate the backup power. Doug, Irina, Gwyn, and El, you're with us. All other teams, focus on clearing our approach, then defend our position once we're in. That is your priority, not destroying all enemy craft. Are we clear? Team Crossida, roger. 
Trishula, Roger. Ningursu, Roger. Balma, Roger. Team Surter, Roger. We'll take out any hostiles along your approach. Breach team, let's go. Roger. Finally, the life hold core. Let's hurry before they can follow us inside. All right, here we go. Our real bodies. We can finally be whole again. Attention, this is life hold core control. System energy levels have dropped below 0.2. Shielding will be disabled in T minus 1000 seconds. Repeat. This is Light Bulb Core Control. What? 15 minutes and we lose the shields? If the core runs out of power, the shields will be the least of our problems. Well, yes and no. We need to keep the core powered, but we do also need those shields. It's two birds with one stone's throw away. The shields will cause the ganglion to use up their materiel and retreat. Exactly. Everything comes down to getting the backup power source online. Right then. Let's do it. Once we're inside, there's no turning back. Everyone ready? You're sure now? Why have we not received confirmation that the target is destroyed? What is the delay? Grandmaster, sir, the target appears to have some manner of customized Tryon barrier. 
A treon barrier? Are you daft? These are humans we're talking about. No one outside of the clue system has access to treon technology. And those scales of theirs. How did a primitive race like theirs manage to piece those together? As you say, Grandmaster. But if they are truly the Founders' descendants, don't speak to me of myths. Ah, a tale to frighten children. They are the disease, not the cure. They are not the failsafe. Cluster 3. The enemy forces are rallying. Sir, we can no longer effectively strike the target. Where are the interceptors? An enemy detachment has cut them off. They can't reach us. But these are savages, not... No, I refuse to believe it. <sighs> Prepare the Vita. I shall crush them myself. Grandmaster, with all due respect, sir, the Vita belongs to the Great One. Your body could not withstand it. The Great One's blood runs in these veins. I will use it, because I must use it. You loose apes! Prophecy or no prophecy! You will not be the end of our people! I swear it! Ah, yes, your barrier. You think it can stop the Vita? Stop the Great One! Is this it? Will my unending thirst for knowledge be satiated at long last? Yeah, so then... Where is it all? All I see is a whole lot of nothing. It's so quiet. I feel like we're back in the cathedral. Okay, Elma. What's the deal here? Where are all the stasis capsules? Where the hell are all our bodies? <sighs> Don't tell me. This isn't the core? Whoa, what? Seriously? This has to be it. You all saw what the core looked like in the mission briefing. This is definitely it. Lynn's right. This is the place. Then where are all the people we brought with us from Earth? You're all controlling these Mims from your real bodies, asleep in stasis. That's the explanation you were given by NLA, or should I say ECP officials. That was the official story, but it's not the whole truth. Colonel, what do you mean? Wretched humans, you'd be dead already if it wasn't for that blasted barrier! <laughs> What the? It's 
that mech they stole from the hangar. Ganglion? He's an ugly mother. Eww. You must be the Ganglion leader. The one Lao spoke of. Luxar, was it? That's him? Do not presume to address me. You defile my name by even speaking it. Only the Great One may call me that. Great One? I am here to purge the universe of your disease, once and for all. What are you so afraid of? Destroying the Earth wasn't enough. You had to chase down the survivors and destroy them, too. What's their threat? You'd even risk flying that crippled mech. That's right, isn't it? It's not complete. It's still missing something vital. Hmm. Interesting. Then you're not entirely ignorant, are you? Perhaps your human birthright allows you to sense it, even in that puppet shell. Birthright? You. You're no ordinary puppet. You must be the one responsible for the Trion Barrier. The scales. This whole blasted mess! <laughs> <laughs> then perhaps I am mistaken after all. Perhaps humanity is the failsafe of the legend. But you will not find the Ganglion content to submit and resign ourselves to that fate. No. Instead, I will purify this world and prepare it for the advent of the Great One! Indeed, fearful of humanity, of your threat. At the dawn of the cosmos, the Samarians arrived from another plane. We Gandalf are forbidden from turning against them. If we ever tried, we would be destroyed. I thought that it was just a myth. And yet here you are, the descendants of Samar! You, you miserable human! Great one's own vessel, best by these primates! 
absolutely sickening! The bigger they come, the harder they face. We came here to ensure the survival of the human race. The will to live is stronger than the will to destroy, Luxar. That is why you lost here today. Yeah. If only I could see him. The Great One. One last... Sure looks that way. <laughs> Lieutenant, we did it! First dance of victory, then Lenly's victory feast! <laughs> sure, Tatsu, I'm game. Let us dance up a storm in any port! Hey, come on, lighten up. We just finally beat the Ganglion. Tatsu even wants to be part of the victory feast. Isn't that right, Tatsu? Wait, when Lily say part of the feast... Yeah, I mean we'll all eat you, in celebration. No, 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 no! Tatsu want nothing to do with Lily's feast, nothing at all! Oh, okay, we'll just eat without you then. B -b -b wait no! Lindley know what Tatsu means! <laughs> I'm sure you two will work it out somehow. Anyway, getting back to the conversation from earlier... So, that big machine hanging above us? I've never seen one anywhere near that size, but it looks like a 7th generation quantum mainframe. That's exactly right. It's by far the most technologically advanced computer humanity has ever created, in terms of both speed and capacity. It's also the foundation for the Earth Life Colonization Project. It's where all your consciousnesses have been recorded. What? Elma... You mean... Yes, that's what I mean. And not just everyone in New L.A. The essence of all 20 million humans we brought with us from Earth are there. Including all their memories, their genetic makeup, anything and everything. It's all been digitized and stored away in the core. Right up there. Then... what about our bodies? You mean the originals all this data was sampled from? They were destroyed, along with the Earth. <laughs> <gasps> then... wait... you mean we're already dead? You could see it that way. Or you could see it differently. The bodies you were born with, and all the chemicals and organs that created and stored your thoughts, are gone. But yourself has lived on as data, from the moment the project scanned your minds. It's all been stored here as part of the long-term plan, until it could be moved back into a real body. What real bodies? I'll show you. Capsules represent a sample of all the genetic material that could be found on Earth. Exodus was always about more than just fleeing the planet. Ships like the White Whale were designed as arcs to carry the building blocks of all life on Earth to the next world. Ark? You mean as in, like, Noah's Ark? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. A last-ditch effort to save all living things that they might someday flourish again.
This entire chamber is filled with protoplasmic fluid. You see how it works. It can regenerate life from the genetic data stored above. Including humans? All of us? Once your bodies are cultivated, your present memory can be transferred back in. Everything you've felt or done in your MIM will be carried over seamlessly, without any loss in continuity. You mean we'll have our bodies back? It sounds too good to be true. It is too good to be true. Our bodies were real. We were born in them. And now you just snap your fingers and bam, we get new ones? Is that even right? It doesn't feel like it. Are we even humans anymore? Transferring our memories? Playing musical chairs with our bodies? Where do you draw the line? How do I know I'll be the same person I was wherever I end up? To some extent, you won't be. But then, you never were. On a cellular level, we all wake up as slightly different people every day. It's only because of the continuity of consciousness that we even perceive ourselves as ourselves. It's all a fragile illusion. And until anyone proves we all have a soul, one better left to the philosophers. You're right to have doubts, Doug. This was the single biggest debate among the ECP board. And rightly so. So then... We did talk about putting actual bodies in stasis. We seriously considered it. In fact, some of the other projects took that path. But they would have been lucky if their ships were able to hold 50,000. <sighs> the Exodus arcs were different. Enough data and materials to revive 20 million people, perfectly preserved on each and every ship. The board weighed all the pros and cons, the ethical issues and dangers of violating the natural order of things. This is what they landed on, and I agreed. So, when Lao said our flesh burned away with the Earth, he wasn't just being dramatic. No, he must have discovered the truth, which only made his pain worse. But the same people who passed over his family were keeping this all secret. It's no wonder he snapped. Bastard. But even so, he never said anything. You know why, right? of you, and we want to see you lose hope. In the end, you let us here, right? In the end, maybe he accepted it. I'd like to think he did. Maybe so. The ultimate hope with Project Exodus was that Mimeosomes could escort this system to a safe new home, lay down the foundations of a new society, and basically reboot humanity and continue where it left off. Despite everything we've been through, with the ganglion and everything else, that dream is almost a reality. <sighs> I know how you feel, Doug, and you can call it whatever you like. But I need to see this through. I'll have to live with my decision. But I get to live with my decision. What about you? <sighs> I'm sorry. This is just a lot to take in. I still have big concerns, but I can see you're following the path you believed in, the choices you were given. So what the hell? I made it this far in a tin can. Why not? Yeah. Me too. Tatsu 3! Uh, Tatsu, this has nothing to do with you. What? No? Sorry, Tatsu a little lost, but... If the king friends get to make more hum hum, Tatsu gladly approve. Hum hum? What the hell is that? Hmm? Uh, Tatsu have no idea. Never see your people reborn. You will die in those puppet bodies of yours. Attention, this is Lifehold Core Control. 
The system has detected a threat to core integrity. Now initiating internal defensive measures. That slug-faced bastard! He's targeting the main control system! Give it up, Luxar! Silence, were You fools! You are the ones who don't belong here! Humanity is the cancer, not us! Everyone, do whatever it takes! We have to stop him, and quickly! Roger that! Wait a second! Look! Initiating internal defensive measures. Are you kidding me? The same system that regenerates life from Earth can also create biological weapons to defend itself. But those are... My God! Those things? Those monsters are a defensive measure? The system's malfunctioning. We have to stop it. <laughs> How perfect. Absolutely perfect. Hideous humans betrayed by their own hideous creation. Who the hell are you calling hideous? was not going anywhere. You deal with the core defenses. Got it. Gotta say, this blade's looking pretty sharp. Didn't have to be like this. Phoenix! Where's our big? Who are we landing? Initiating internal defensive measures. Final day. Scum, what happened to our bargain? Do you humans have no principles at all? Principles? You deal with a traitor, you really shouldn't be surprised when you get stabbed in the back! <sighs> you primitive little ingrate! Have you forgotten what they did to you? What they did to your family? Oh, I remember all right. My family'd still be here if you hadn't brought your damned war to our doorstep. Because of you, there's only 20 million of us left. That leaves 9.98 billion reasons for me to want you dead. You who took my wife and daughter away from me, Luxar! <laughs> It was true! It was all true! to die off along with our home, along with Earth. But something happened here on Mira. I realized I was wrong. These mimeosomes, they aren't just ghosts or shadows. They're people, seeds of new life that are struggling to take root. I finally see that now. What's happening? It's like all the life on Earth is flowing inside me.
absorbing all the DNA. We have to stop him. No, you can't. Out of the way, Lynn. We can't let the life hold be destroyed. This time, I'll shoot. Elma! It's not me anymore. This body is beyond my control. Please, Lynn, bring an end to this. Don't let me be the one who finally ruins everything. Everything humanity has achieved to get us this far! Last warning, Lynn. You need to move. Okay, but then I'm fighting too. Not just for our sake, but for his! And you, are you with me? Thank you.
How's it look? Is it still running? It's fine. Looks like it held together. Thank God. We saved it. All of us. But... We couldn't save Lao. On the contrary. By stopping him and preventing him from destroying the system, we saved Lao too. That's right. His DNA. And his memories. All of it is still stored in here. Exactly. And with this, now we finally have the means to bring him back. But wait. Would he even want to come back? All the things he did. He'll be able to remember them all, right? All the more reason. <laughs> you can't make up for your mistakes when you're dead. Hell, he'd better come back. He's got work to do. Wrongs he needs to right. <laughs> She's right. Okay then. Come on, let's hurry up and restore the system. <sighs> Colonel? Everyone wait. There's one more thing I need to talk to you about. Oh man, what now? The truth is... Exactly one Mim in New L.A. actually is being controlled remotely from a real body held in stasis here. Wait, someone isn't stored in the database with the rest of us? That's right. This was a special case. The hell does that mean? Better just to show you. Is that really you? Yes. This is my true form. I was kept here in stasis. The only Xenoform on board. Wait a second. All this time you were an alien? No way. And all the more lovely for it. I hope you all understand. And at the end of the day, I just hope you'll still consider me as one of you. We will. You've earned that, Elma. It's not about how you look. It's the person you are on the inside. That's what counts. Yes, yes! Lynn's right. Colonel, listen. We know whatever you did, you felt it was for the greater good. Yeah. Nothing's changed. That's right. Everyone, thank you. Your trust means everything to me, and I have so much more to tell you now that this time has finally arrived. But first, there's something I must do. And it's something that only I can do. There. The backup power should be all set. Biometric authorization accepted. Initializing backup power system. Hey, so did that really just work? There's 
no way it might still run out of juice? No, it's working. Elma, it's Secretary Nagi. Put him through. It's official, everyone. Power has been restored. Congratulations. Fandom is reporting that the ganglion forces outside the lifehold have been routed. The prospectors should have the main power system back online in a matter of days. Roger that. It's over. Excellent work, all of you. Well, we all gotta die sometime, but it won't be today. That's right. Once the main power is back online, we don't need to worry about running out again. And we won't even need that anymore once we're back in our bodies. Yup, you got that right. First things first, we'll need to get the control system repaired. Then we'll hit up the database down below. We need to check on your memories. Just a second. Wasn't she saying she was going to tell us the rest of what she knows? Hey, that's right. I got so excited I almost forgot. Relax, there's no need for us to hurry, right? We're finally home free. We've got all the time in the world now. Well, it's a pretty long story. Tell you what, why don't we go back to New LA and we can talk over a nice big celebratory feast. Good idea! Lily can cook it all. Tatsu will oversee. Yeah, you can watch over everything. From inside the stew pot. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. It's settled. Well, then. Without further ado... Right. Back to New L.A. We're ready now. Ready to go home. It was 30 years ago when Elma first came to Earth. She'd come with a mission. A war was being waged between the Interstellar Federation the Ganglion belonged to and another alien civilization. And Elma knew that eventually, that war would come to Earth. She came to our planet, alone, to save us. She convinced those in power, like Secretary Nagi, but the threat was real, and helped put into motion a grand plan to preserve all of mankind. Her alien tech brought us scales so we could defend ourselves. It gave us light speed travel to ensure our escape. And it led to mimeosomes to facilitate our survival. None of this would have been possible for centuries without the help we received from Elma. Everyone says the Earth died that day. But not me. I don't believe it. The White Whale couldn't have been the only Ark to escape, either. There must be other survivors out there. Somewhere. The path ahead may not be clear, and it certainly won't be easy. But for now, the important thing is we're here, on Mira, and we're alive. And we'll live on for now with faith in our hearts that one day we can once again set out to search for the planet we left behind.
Wait, what? This damage isn't from our last battle. It's from earlier, when we crashed on Mira. It does look pretty bad in there, doesn't it? You'd never know it by looking at the exterior. Right. I'm entering the database chamber. Hmm. Be extra careful in there. That's everything we've been working for. Understood. What is it, Elma? Is there a problem with the database? No. That's impossible. Elma, report. Elma! Secretary, I'll stick to the facts. The system, everyone's consciousnesses and memories, the entire database, has been destroyed for some time. Destroyed. What do you mean? Explain yourself. The entire chamber is flooded. It's trashed. The system is completely shut down. And not just recently. It's been this way since we got to Mira. That's absurd. Then... then how are we... How in the world would anyone be? I know. So then why would you be alive? It's not possible. Without the database, all your identities should be gone too. It's this planet. It's something about this planet 